very, very cool. It was good to see so many top level players playing that well. And we are going to get straight into our first match already. It's going to be the Guile versus Marisa. And uh, a, a relatable name. A little want some whiskey here on the Guile. Want some whiskey, yeah. Maybe I should grab some here. But we got Hey Danny Boy coming through with Mommy Marisa in the wedding dress here. But once the whiskey already going to start things off, getting that throw in. Of course, Guile's going to want to try and set up controlling the pace of this game. The threat of, of Marisa armoring through the Sonic Booms is going to be real depending on the range that she's at. Yeah, as often as possible, you want to be threatening with the normals when you can. Very nice use of the punish counter there to be able to get the confirm from max distance. The crouching medium kick as we find that throw again. And the pressure still doing really, really well. Danny Boy tries to go for the command throw, but it's a very nice jump and a very nice follow-up from Watson Whiskey. Yeah, jumping is so strong against Marisa, not only as an offensive option because of how weak her anti-airs are, but just as a defensive option too. If she commits to command grab or the standing medium punch target combo, you're gonna get out of that for free and get a massive punish. Here we go, just trying to maneuver through this fireball game again, seeking out those normals like you mentioned. There's the jump in, challenging with the crouching light punch. Yeah, even with the uh, the anti-air game being a little weak from Marisa and a little particular in certain areas, you still have to be willing to commit and you have to be willing to stop Guile from getting into these situations. You cannot birdwatch. Does get the jump over though and the punish counter, so a big opportunity after this knockdown. Oh, gets the back throw, sends her right back into the corner. Yeah, we could have gotten a little bit more off of that standing medium punch punish, but that's all right. You know, we're holding onto our drive gauge here. Needs to be careful though, because now you're back to a disappointing position. There's the sweep, and that's gonna close out game number one. Dash up sweep, not what you normally see in that spot, but Whiskey got some confidence here. Definitely looking very, very strong as things continue here into the next game. I'm trying to go for that early EX. Using that EX Sonic Boom very early to try and find a knockdown. The jump scare works out usually. Yeah, and that flash kick, the reversal is so strong too. Again, if a Marisa player commits to that standing medium punch target combo, she has to go for something that really uh, keeps the gap as small as possible or else you're gonna give your opponent time to go for a flash kick or an invincible reversal. Okay, good tech there to reset things. No punish on the sweep though. Again, letting that sweep rock a little liberally here. Yeah, that was a really good opportunity there to get some offense started. And still, we're trying to claw away at the neutral while Whiskey is just whittling down Danny's health. But there we go. Standing Heavy Punch confirmed does not get the uppercut afterwards, though. Sweep again. Still no punish. And the throw afterwards. Another big opportunity there coming out from Danny Boy that doesn't quite convert. And Whiskey, with the jump forward, looked for the air throw, but didn't quite find it. Still is able to get it, though, with the multiple lows. That crouching medium kick, such a strong poke. Yeah, being such an active Guile, too, the amount of, uh, <laughs> of sweeps that he is just letting rip, right, that are going unpunished is huge so far in this match. Again, just staying on his toes, trying to keep the pressure up. Not the punish that you want to get on a whiff flash kick, unfortunate. Okay, found that book again. Jump comes through, backs things off. And I really like that walk forward. We have good ideas here from Danny Boy. Finally does get the knockdown, but unfortunately again, can't turn it into too much. Back to full screen. And Whiskey still looking content and continuing to get away with these jumps. Yeah, the upside of Marisa here though, is you just have to be able to guess right one time. I mean, Whiskey is in death range and we can get a single confirm here from Danny Boy. But oh no, definitely wanted the drive impact in that situation and instead got the reversal. And I got to point out what is the elephant to the room, uh, the, the elephant in the room to me here. We haven't seen a single Superman punch. I feel like that's one of the strongest things you can do against Guile is kind of scare him off the Sonic Boom, show him that that option is on the table uh, and kind of help lower the options down a little bit. It just hasn't been a selected option yet. And I feel like as Marisa in this matchup, it has to be on the table or you're going to get into neutral situations like this. I mean, you're absolutely correct. You have to establish some kind of threat, right, to go in. It's going to blow up a lot of those lows, and which is a huge thing to do. But here's a nice jump in with the crouching light kick. Or excuse me, the jumping light kick. Especially with Kyle going for crouching medium kick and boom so often at this, like, two character length range. That's the perfect range to try and go for that big low crush with the Superman punch. Just not feeling confident in it, but now we are in burnout. Not gonna quite die here, but I don't really know how you make this comeback, right? Doesn't have the meter, doesn't have the drive gauge, and is gonna eat the chip damage. Whiskey now sitting at set point. Danny really needs to kind of reach in that bag and pull out some other tricks. And I think you're right. The Superman punch may be the trick that we need in order to swing this match in our favor. Oh, big jump in here. Extra damage on the, and it's gonna go straight level three. I really like that, especially because he spent so much drive gauge early into the round. Get 
yourself as much back as possible. Half the life off the table. Oh, just a clean jump in, though. Again, keeping this pressure up. We're trying to poke to get out. And still, even when we get out with a jumping light kick, we're not really getting anything off of it. But that's going to be it. Wants some whiskey. Moving on 3-0 in the bracket. Winner's side. So, I don't know. He was the I'm archetype. very excited to see. <laughs> But it's going to be Chun-Li up against DJ here to kick things off. And we got both outfit number threes coming through. Again, these outfits are incredible. DJ has one of the best ones, I gotta be honest. It really is good. The disco ball jacket, it's so fire. And this color is fire on it, too. Yeah, and Terrence with the ATL Dojo logo as well. This is absolutely the Terrence from Dream Pack, which is very cool to see. Like we said, had a stellar performance. I believe that uh, it was seventh or fifth. I believe it was fifth this weekend, which is a very, very strong placement. And is uh, showing that off already. He's able to get the punish counter and keep the throw pressure going. Yeah, and then just walking up and checking with the standing light punch. That's something that uh, I noticed at DreamHack as well, is that just the standing light punch pressure from Chun-Li is so strong. It comes out so quick, has a great hitbox on it, and she can really just walk up and check you, stuff you before you try to counter poke. And that's combined with her fast movement speed, right? Her fast walking speed is really what allows that to be a threat. There we go. Scores a throw. Already in full control of the pace of this match. Melbomb really hasn't gotten to get anything started. Dude, and is able to go for the Hazanshi to break over the second fireball. Great reaction, great timing to be able to make that work. Strong on Terrence. Now back to the neutral here. Try to poke with those jabs whenever you can. Sets up the fireball and walks behind just a little bit. But again, that OD fireball coming out from, uh, dude. I feel like DJ's OD fireball is one of the sickest tools in the game, whether it's uh, anti-air confirmed, just it being a, a strong fireball overall in general, things work out really well for him. Yeah, it's a very versatile tool, but man, these throws from parents really just kind of baiting Nelbomb into that range to whiff something so they can score the punish. And Nelbomb really trying to turn up the pressure here, throwing out the sways. Is going to get caught low straight into the drive rush, though. Still comes through again. Drive rush afterwards is able to find the drive impact as well as the meter is going to be able to go into the CA and easily close that one. Terrence is going to be able to secure the first game, but with Nelbaum with some very good adaptations as we get farther into it. Again, I really like the use of the OD fireball and how we're able to find conversions and how we're able to be uh, pretty good at taking real estate, even against a character, like you said, that has the high movement speed and great buttons of Chun-Li. Yeah, I think the smart part here for Nelbaum was they were getting a lot more successful when they were getting into that boxing range, right? Not allowing Chun-Li to really establish that fireball game or use her really long normals to keep you poked out. You want to smother her with pressure. Oh, but that's an unfortunate whiff. That's just the parry. Jab actually stops the jump out as well. Right into the throw loops. Was going to go for another throw there, but we got stuffed out after the jab. Oh, and the shimmy was so well placed, just didn't commit. Again, that OD fireball able to turn you into a great conversion here, but the EX up kicks right afterwards, able to bust out, tries to go for the overhead, but one good OD up kick deserves another. Anything will do it now, and Terrence is gonna get the full conversion. Oh my God. Yeah, and that was just Nelbaum getting a little too greedy there at the end, right? Saw that sliver of health left and thought, I just need to find one touch. Problem was, you were in that one touch range as well. Oh, it hurts. Oh my god, get the punish counter again. Wow. What a nice conversion from max range. Empty jump into the throw. Huge damage on that throw thanks to the punish counter. And I think you're dead. We're going to go right into the critical art. That should deal just enough damage to finish it off. Dude, and that is, again, one of the greatest strengths, I feel like, of Chun-Li is this character builds an absurd amount of meter, it feels like. Uh, granted, I think that meter gain in general is very high in this game, which is really healthy and really good. But I feel like Chun-Li in general feels like she gains more than everyone else because she's one of the characters where I feel like you can utilize like her level two over and over and over again. We see a ton of different Chun-Li's kind of utilize into that strategy or even situations like that where Terrence is just kind of holding it for the CA. Yeah, and holding it for that CA has been so proficient here. This time we go for the overhead after the stance. Oh, fake out the landing so late on it too. All this conditioning that Terrence is doing. Look at this, just checking you with the standing light punch, threatening you to do something. 
drive rush afterwards, goes to drive impact, tries to interrupt something twice in a row. Terran says, I have a game plan. I'm hitting the button. The one true neutral, the guaranteed armor, is able to interrupt the drive rush as well. So much meter spent already. A static gorilla, the homie. Good to see you, buddy. 40 months. Woo! Thank you for the support here. And look at that drive rush right on in. Does miss the link, though. Was definitely going to try and go for another hit into the spinning bird kick to get that corner carry. So the Nell Bomb getting another chance at life here, but needs to find the right opening. Neutral jump can be really scary in spots like that. Especially if your opponent has charge, especially against DJ. Like you said, that OD Fireball, just like that, is able to get pretty decent pressure started. Does find a throw. Look at that, just trying to check with the standing light kick there. Three bars on deck. Nelbaum in a really strong position to take this round. Has Terrence backed up against the rope. We need to find the confirm. Don't get greedy. So I like Nelbaum slowing things down, right? Before we got too greedy and ended up losing because of it. Don't come through. But is maybe being a little too hesitant there. The overhead is able to get the reset, gets the clean touch. Yeah, that reset squeezing out so much more damage. And just like that, the tables have turned. Terrence trying to close things out now. Oh, and burnout is huge. You actually put yourself in such a monstrous lead now. You can basically just block string in the legs, but you have to be really careful. You can't be predictable about it. It's not a true block string off of almost anything, but instead just a fireball will be good enough for Terrence to move on board three to zero. The jump scare EX fireball too, You're right? 3D coming. player, everyone is here in Street Fighter 6 and it's looking like it is gonna be Rashid up against Kami. Kanoko on Kami, rocking the trench coat. Bro, this outfit's too cool. So off the start, playing a little slow. Does find the jump in there, but Static Grill had already advanced a little farther than expected, but there we go. Simply get the drive rush on the clean confirm and finds the throw off of it. This is how pressure kind of snowballs for Kami, but just up forward from Static Gorilla. And nice with the anti-air there. Oh, Minoko, well-placed anti-air is just kind of controlling the neutral at the moment here. Static's only gotten a few stray hits, nothing too substantial. That's an easy answer here on the jumping as well. Okay, but we get our own mixer. Be able to get yourself out of pressure. Finds the Eagle Spire as well. All of a sudden, this is looking significantly more even. Static Gorilla keeping the offense going. Oh, but wow, what a well-placed normal there from Monoko. Again, now we're back to the shimmying full screen. What a punish counter there too with the crouching heavy kick. Or standing heavy, excuse me. Okay, gonna try and get away with the level two here. Close some distance, finds a throw. Attempt, but not quite able to actually get there. Looks for the reset on the overhead. Good blocks from Minoko again. Yeah, Minoko feels very, very practiced in this matchup, right? Knows the exact gaps in Static's pressure to find that single button press to immediately turn things around, but does with the anti air this time. Not gonna matter too much though. They're able to score a hit. Yeah, and able to find that jab, like you said, interrupting pressure in all the right places. Finds Ooh. the force knockdown. They're able to get the spiral arrow afterwards. I like that. I like that Minoko is taking these really slow and steady, right? Just trying to find those stray hits. Nothing too fancy when it comes to the combos. Just finding the confirms and ending it with the spiral arrows to try and push towards the corner. Oh, tried to set up for some shenanigans there. Not quite going to be able to get there. A drop from Static Gorilla, though, and an amazing walk underneath from Minoko. That is how you... Dude. Active defense. Active defense is so smart there. As soon as you see the uh, the pressure kind of reset, Minoko just holds forward, walks out of the corner, is able to completely reset everything and just kind of know, take back pressure in a really impressive way. Yeah, I mean, I've been very impressed so far by just Minoko's play and defense all together. Defense is really understated in fighting games, right? We all love to press the buttons, but knowing how to how to get out of these sticky situations is honestly even more important. Again, the challenge gets to confirm into the spiral arrow, but the safe jump isn't gonna work there. 
away. Don't go through once again. And then, uh, dude, just not letting any of these fireballs, any of these setups go for free. Gets the jab, crutch, medium kick for the punish counter, but Static Gorilla still willing to brawl it out at the CQC. But of all the characters you're going to do it with, Cammy, probably not on the list of people you should try it. Oh, look at that. Getting caught with the standing light punch again there. Both of these characters, the battles of the standing light punch. But here we go. Send out the level two. Winning your level two here is huge. You have to win this round if you're static. Let's get the push through. Oh, no. That's a heartbreaker. Committing the meter in a situation like that and not getting the round is massive. We are going to get first blood going straight into the next round, though. Trying to keep that pressure up. And Sejam coming through with the big raid. Thank you so much, Sejam. Hope yeah, you had a good stream, enjoying that Grand Blue. Yeah, appreciate you a lot, homie. Thank you very much. Y'all are just in time. We are still very early in pools. We're doing Street Fighter 6 tonight on TNS. Appreciate y'all for stopping in. But here we go, coast to coast there, just keeping the pressure on with the spiral arrows. And there's the shimmy. You're about to lose your life. Just like that, putting him in the blender of Anoko. Again, just good defensive choices. Oh. Not quite enough to kill, but you can still potentially go for the meaty. Chip will do it. Yeah, there you there go. There it is. Boom. Now game number two. Yeah, that was a little scary. We could have extended that combo just a little bit more to guarantee the kill, but I, I respect just straight going for it. Okay, nice little jab. Again, not letting any of the fake stuff through. Gets the jump over, but Static Gorilla turns that into a mix-up here. Was able to get the side switch, but again, no fake pressure jabbing everything. Look at this. You are not allowed to escape. That light pressure is so oppressive. And there we go. Cannon Spike taking you out of the skies. Massive punish here. Oh, no! Okay, drop is big. Static Gorilla going to get a decent amount of damage off of here. Still in burnout as well, so you got to take what you can get. But again, active defense. The pressing is massive. Look at this. How do you escape from this situation? Oh, just gets a jump out there. Took to the skies and it worked out. I need to take this second lease on life here and capitalize. Does get caught. Checked with the drive rush forward. And that's something that Minoko has been consistently doing. Just checking Static Gorilla's drive rushes over and over with that standing light punch. Yeah, you've got to be more cognizant of how you're structuring pressure when your opponent is showing this. Kami has very strong light and buttons as we've seen over and over again. If your opponent is going to rep jab this often, you have to structure your pressure in a way where that jab is not going to blow it up here. Static Gorilla so far in this sequence is doing a much better job has to use the drive reversal to be able to break out of the corner. Here comes the level two. All right, tries to go for another parry there. That drive reversal was really interesting too. Held onto the parry for a little bit before doing drive reversal. That actually gave them a little bit more drive gauge than if they just flat out did the reversal to start things off. But finally, Static Gorilla takes a round. Absolutely, and a lot of that, again, was just because of the restructure of pressure. When you're going after an opponent that's going to mash a lot of jab, you have to be in consideration. You have to be spacing yourself correctly for that. Meanwhile, on the side of Minoko, again, just still trying to get pressure applied wherever you can. There's the perfect parry to stop a little bit of this pressure from Static Gorilla. Looks for the hooligan and takes that step back. Static was not ready for the step back with a medium kick. And now you're in the corner of the thread. The throw loops are coming through. Does get caught with the meaty, but no full confirm. Takes the skies though for the air grab. Very nice. And there's the shimmy. Crouching medium kick. Minoko doesn't close it out though. Yeah, still has the bar. High potential for a comeback here. Except for the parry. Oh man. If Static finds some kind of knockdown, some kind of pressure off of that situation, he has the level two and he has the potential to be able to run that thing back. Thank it was very much. Appreciate you. Four months. Thank you. And yeah, that is going to be the matchup here. This matchup is really annoying from the Honda perspective. I feel like Luke has all the tools to be able to stuff just about everything that Honda wants to do. But with that said, Honda does still have headbutt, still has butt stomp, still has a lot of tools to be able to fight this. So it's not hopeless, but I would definitely say a Luke favored matchup we're going into. You could rewind that and just say Luke has all the tools and you would have been correct. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, dude. It's just uh, Luke has the tool, crouching medium punch. Man, it answers so many things that come out in this matchup here. But nice on the autocorrect, on uh -oh. the headbutt and is able to find the punish counter. Yep. Guess it. What? Oh, I thought that was going to be an empty jump on the other side, but Jewel Man had already committed. Still getting the back throw, putting Co-op into the corner. There's the stun, and that should be the first round. 
Absolutely no meter required either. Honda, somewhat of a powerhouse himself when it comes to dealing out that damage. Right, yeah, just checking there with the frame traps. Co-op trying to swing back, but it is not working here. We're going to go ahead and praise the sun. Get that buff on our hands. I love Luke Fossil too, by the way. I'll say it. I'll be the one to say it. Just get rid of the tattoos and braces and we're good. Ouch. Drive impact. Honda trying to take him off himself. Straight into the hands and straight into the follow-up. The level three comes through. And that is the game. Jewel Man, first one in the books. Yeah, beautiful confirm there from Jewel Man. Playing perfectly. Had a little bit of a shake up there when we went for that empty jump and got blown up by the level one, but still in full control. Okay, it's hard to get into a, a mid range fight there with Luke. It's uh, definitely ambitious from the Honda player here, but that's an easy crouching fierce after the jump on the tech and the perfect parry to get the punish on the headbutt. Yeah, just sent you right back into the corner there. Tries to go for the throw after the plus frames, but good call out from Jewel Man. Look at this patience. He's poised. Oh, too poised. Oh, no. Right, there it is. Fine Buster is going to get caught, though, trying to reel up that heavy knuckle. Okay. That's a little extra confirm there. He's going to go for the level one for the corner carry and is able to get the burnout off of it. Wow, that is such a good option. Incredible awareness there from Jewel Man, recognizing the situation and going straight for that burnout. Now we got to get in. There it is. Just waiting for the prime time to go for the headbutt as Snailbar comes in with the prime sub. Thank you so much. Okay. Should be able to get the kill off that. Does just barely enough damage here, which is odd to say for Luke, because, man, he'd be, uh, he'd be outputting. <laughs> A lot of neutral jumps coming through from Jewel Man as well, right? Whenever co-op gets up close. That's something that I've noticed here. Something that co-op needs to take uh, note of as well. I really like that uh, Jewel Man has started going for the empty jumps uh, specifically to try and bait out the parry as well. Co-op is tapping parry on almost every single jump and a lot on a lot of wake-ups too, just like you saw there. So Jewel Man, less is more in situations like that. Again, if, you're, if you think your opponent is going to throw out a lot of parries, a lot of the times just representing something that feels like they should tap parry is good enough to vamp a lot of bar out of them, which is so important for Honda. Absolutely. There we go, gets the plus frames immediately into the throw. Co-op now in the driver's seat, has Jewel Man up against the corner. CA. Yep, there it is, finally throws it out. Don't know if it's gonna be enough to kill here though, it should be close. Yeah, a little too much scaling on that combo and now you are in burnout, needs to be careful. This is gonna chip. Yes, oh, but it Eat. hits raw. Dude, even if that had hit block, I think that would have chipped. I love that wake up super from Jewel Man. One CA deserves another, all the meter off the table and even rounds again. Patience, trying to check. Yeah, we've been going for those one touch into throw pretty consistently here. Jewel Man finally getting a throw tech. Let's see how consistent that's gonna be. Fine Buster. There we go. Nice answer. That crouching heavy punch has a perfect angle to challenge the butt slam. And by perfect angle, you mean it hits all angles, but there you go. With the drive impact, good reactions there. Don't want to get checked in a spot like that. Call up to send the level one. He's going to be able to send the game, evens it up one to one. Yeah, really doing a good job bringing things back, especially with how Jewel Man was really in full control in game number one, right? It's just taking Co-op some time to adjust, to figure out the timings, to dealing with things like the butt slam. Yeah, just completely jumping out of the way after that headbutt. I like that decision a lot. Didn't even want to deal with what was coming after. Oh my god, that step forward was really good to bait the jump, but unfortunately wasn't ready for the anti-air. We talk about that all the time. If you're going to position yourself for something sick like that, you've got to be ready to convert. 
Fortunately for Honda, it was just a little too far away to get that crouching medium punch after the drive rush confirm. Tries to go for it a second time here. Nice parry, though, from Co-op. But again, you are right, Proxy. He is essentially going for parry in every single defensive option. I wonder if Jewel Man might want to start mixing in some command grabs. Dude, OD Ocho takes a chunk, especially if you get it on the punish counter. Oh no, you don't want to get into a drive. You don't want to get into a drive rush fight with Luke, but maybe the drive impact one can go a little more in your favor. Great corner carry on that, but a perfect parry is able to jump out of the throw. I think he was a little too far away to get the reversal grab anyway. Yeah, there's the punish counter, didn't charge up the knuckle. Tries to go for a big reversal, but is gonna pay for it. Do we go into level three? No, we're holding on to the meter. Oh, wake up parry again though. We gotta start mixing in some of this strike throw here, but nope, you are not going to be able to drive impact that headbutt for free. Yeah, drive impacting headbutts is a, uh, depending on the distance, that is like a genuinely impossible reaction. It is it is right outside the limit of humans being able to do it. So you gotta be careful about that, especially when Honda's able to just kind of land and mash his own. And look at just the, the micro spacing here from Co-op, right? Walking just outside of Honda's range and then punishing with the standing light punch target combo. I I want to see drive. I, next time we do a normal in the drive rush, I really want to see Ocho. Yeah, normal though is going to work out there too, though. Oh, anti-air headbutt hits its mark. Uh-oh. Yeah, punish that. And close it out here right into the critical art. The ring uh, of fire. That's a little unfortunate there from Co-op. Tried to go for something that level three doesn't quite connect. Honda's able to get a huge punish on it. Yeah, and so, I, I don't really know what it was about that round. Co-op had been playing so fundamentally solid. And then in that last round there, just throwing out these haymakers, right? The EX wake up DP, the wake up raw super. But neither of them paying off and really costing him game number three there. Okay. No, Miss Payne. That little walk underneath was Bro. so sick, too. We have corner. Oh, my God. And there it is. Empty jump into the command grab. Look at that chunk. Oh, oh no. Dead. And there goes the rest of your life bar. Oh, no. Jewel yeah. man. Confidence is key. This is a crazy way to start this. But co-op, nice answers. Spending a ton of the drive gauge just to be able to get this corner pressure. All right. Getting throw loops in, another one. No, nope. goes for the shimmy, but instead gets a trade. That is really unfortunate. Beautiful reactions though with the reverse drive impact. Make him pay for it. Okay, just got the sides with there. Doesn't get too much else. Blood stomp works out. Ochio connects as well. Oh, we are just letting the Ochios rip now, huh? Done all that conditioning with just the strike game throughout this set. And now in this final game, we have been pulling out so many command grabs. Depending on the hit, this is also a kill for Jewel Man. CA obviously available. Both players, one thing will do it for anybody. Oh, nice whip punish. Gotta be careful about every single fireball that you throw. EX headbutt can be so scary. Yeah, level two can also bust through, but there we go. Co-op, gonna be able to save the meter, close the round. So important here, you've gotta make this two to two. Oh, taking the opportunity there not to go for Oki, but instead to bless the sun. Yeah, and if Co-op had just been walking forward, he would have killed him for it. That was actually not a safe charge. That's just the respect that you built up, right? Through how often he's been going for Oki and keeping the pressure up. Co-op didn't want to take the opportunity. Oh, but nice, nice jump back, getting the crouch and medium kick punish here. Yeah, we're going to take him right to Memphis, squeeze out as much damage as possible, and more importantly, build back up your drive gauge, right? Gotta be careful for the wake up reversal though. Yeah, throw is the perfect choice there. Beats OD headbutt. And you see the OD headbutt as the second option. Jewel Man committing to it again. There we go. Nice punish. Not gonna be able to get a kill though. Didn't have enough drive gauge to go on in. And now things are starting to get squirrely proxy. And there's the stun. Oh, oh my god. And then looks at him. Just, you know, get himself mentally right. Jewel Man is gonna get the super, gonna get the kill, and is gonna get the set. Luke, goodbye, soldier. That is tragic. 
Wow. The way he stared at him, he said, I'm going to give you some time to think about oh. what went wrong there, all right? As soon as Uni drops, expect very near in the future after it comes out that we're going to be announcing something. But into the match, bro. This is Alvin. the best. <laughs> Look Alvin. at the, the costume was so good, dude. He just got off his job at the noodle shop, bro. With the flops on? Oh, you're just, that's crazy. <laughs> it's the towel around the head that completes the look. This is actually one of my favorite Ryu costumes ever, bro. It's so good. Oh, but there we go. Paladin. The legend Ryu. Trying to go for that drive impact again. Okay, back dope. Potential to turn this thing around. Nice, perfect parry, but is able to kind of prey on that with a good crouching medium punch afterwards. Tries to react, but it looks like he didn't have the meter for it there. Didn't have enough for the drive impact. All right, does get caught by the spine buster here. Back up against the wall. Yep, there it is. A drive impact. And even though Paladin really took that round up, like <laughs> a blazing start, Vidix able to really turn things around in a big yeah. way. To steal one from Guilty Gear, man, the back throw incident. That is, a, yeah. it's super real in a lot of these titles here. But I love that we're constantly going for these conversions where we're looking for the drive impact in combos, trying to absolutely break our opponent of having that meter and now is able to get the stun. And Ryu, one of his key points, bro, the damage is ridiculous. Always has been. Ryu is the heavy hitter, Shoto for sure. Wow, checking the drive rush there just with the Hadoken. Beautiful crouching medium punch, and you should be dead. Double standing heavy kick linked level one super. I actually did. Today I learned. I actually didn't know that worked. Lucas, are you taking notes, bro? He's the Our production guy is a, is a Ryu player. He is the blueprint for Ryu players everywhere here. He sent me eye emojis, chat. He's watching. He's absorbing. There you go, standing medium kick, good stop sign there. Is able to use eyes a ton of drive meter to get try and get aggressive, but Paladin stays true. Look at the page that just walks up with the standing light punch. <laughs> Bro, help. There's there no is. help. Not in situations like that. Didn't even have to spend the bar. Paladin takes the first one, and we're gonna go straight back in. Whoa, the perfect parry into the sweep. What was that Oki proxy? I like that. I like that. I like that. That felt old school. The toe with the whiff Tatsu into the throw. I like that a lot. Traveling back in time. Mm, cross cut. Good. Anti air Shinku Hadoken. It unfortunately is not going to get all of it, though. Fabidix is now in burnout. This is an opportunity for Paladin to set something up. Mm, said I'm not quite Ken, but I can still do it. Drive rushes behind the fireball, definitely like it. And is able to donkey kick the knockdown. I like that after donkey kick, he immediately charges up the dungeon, right? Just make sure we can get that enhanced fireball on deck. Beautiful confirm here from Vidix, though. Spending everything that we have. Level one, not quite enough to get it done, though. It runs right into the fireball. Oh, that TP, I definitely don't think that's what we wanted here. Spends the OD Fireball and does get it in the end. I feel like there's been a couple opportunities in a row where Paladin has had the anti-air and it just missed the input. We've seen him like go for that little wiggle and the step forward, but has not quite been able to find the DP. No, oh, and these perfect parries, beautiful. Able to score the overhead here. Ooh, going into the target combo, a little sauce in there. I hate watching Paladin because it makes me want to play Ryu. OD Tatsu, follow up. Bro, oh my god, he is running wild. There's the drive impact. Perfect KO with the DP. Paladin up 2-0. Yeah, good control. Good way to keep yourself in it. Luke is a character that can definitely bully you if you let him get away with it here. So far, Paladin with a perfect parry and a great turnaround. Hmm. I'm about to go back and study these Paladin tapes, Proxy. Start grinding Ryu. <laughs> Go back to my roots. <laughs> nice punish. Look at that. I feel like he's always got Denjin charged up every single time. Okay. Did use the parry there? Is able to find the back though afterwards? 
this. Your fireball doesn't get too much else. Knockdown comes through again. Punish counter on the throw. The fireball looked like we were going to wake up and parry that fireball for the Luke, but it doesn't quite connect. Wow, checking the drive rush forward there with the crouching medium kick. Charges up the dungeon. Perfect. Parries again on these fireballs. Paladin is on fire right now. And for the second time, the perfect parry again is just looking for burnout. Oh, I mean, he gets burnout, but this is not how you wanted to see it happen. Yeah, no. And now push to the corner. Needs to really be careful here. Oh, he tried to bait up the DP. Paladin let it rip anyway, and it still hit. The thing that gets me is how active he is, is as Ryu. Look at that again! Checking the drive rush with the crouching medium kick has been so consistent here for Paladin. Wakes up with drive impact, takes a step backwards. Nice, perfect parry, and that should be enough to kill. Like, what, what does Biddux do there, right? It's not like he was playing badly. And as we jump right into our next match, speaking of lawful evil, here is JP. This costume's kind of hard. He feels like Wind Waker Ganon. Am I trolling? Bro, you... <laughs> I can't <laughs> see it now. <laughs> Knocked yeah, down with the Jinrai kick. Tried to go for the overhead, gets pushed full screen once. Again, back to the mini game, but JP can walk up afterwards. Bro, if only Ken had the green, <laughs> it was the green oh Ken color. <laughs> All right, but yeah, Ken versus JP, very familiar matchup here. Jazzo trying to move on in, doesn't want to deal with JP's very powerful zoning. We're gonna go ahead and set up the portal. Goes right in for the overhead, and that's gonna be round one. Dude, I feel like I forget about the overhead quite often because it doesn't feel like it gets utilized that often. It's kind of a jump scare a lot of the time. JP, obviously amazing normal. Gotta be careful about how you're trading at that one character length with Ken, though. His reward is so damn high, and he gets the punish on the wake up OD Amnesia. Yeah, but OD Amnesia comes out again. If at first you don't succeed, try again, and now you're back to square one. Full screen, Portal is on the field. Broken is not getting any easier. <laughs> the round of applause. Oh my god, but there we go. Bro, he ran the full 100 yards. <laughs> Go for the reset into the pro. I like that a lot. Get those four loops on deck. Trying to bait out the amnesia there. This time, though, Grant does wake up with a button. Okay, good follow up. It's just going to cash out with the super. I don't think it's going to be quite enough, but still, this is a huge advantage situation. It's the best bet at closing out this round, right? Especially with how much Jazz has been able to just immediately get in. Just goes for the dash up command grab. Stealing it away and taking game number one. Beautiful I'll get stuff. my I'll get my one JP complaint out. I, I get one per week, right? Why does he have a command throw, dude? Oh, just he why? It, he has bro. so much stuff and then he has that. That's crazy. Nice punch counter though. Full screen. Crouching fears afterwards. Able to send it all the way with the corner carry. A zoner with a command grab and an invincible reversal, man. Wish Axel had that. Oh my god, nice teleport. Almost converts it, but not quite. Jazzo again gets the turnaround on it. And the oh, yeah. punish. OD Amnesia has been punished almost every time. I don't think it's connected yet. Ooh, and Katsu's to the other side. Is going to get caught, though, by the wake up crouching light punch. Wow, he's just dragon lash right on in. Able to score the raw hit into the confirm. These feints, too. I like the way that Grant is mixing in the feints. Just needs to find a single touch. You are in burnout, though. Gotta be careful. Oh, no. That's a little unfortunate that our meter gets spent up there. Then you have to make a really dire decision in the end. And that is just always going to be in JP's favor. He's so good at counterpunching, in particularly spots like that. Absolutely. And there's a counterpunch as well. Going to send you full screen. Spending it. We just want the very large lead here, and I definitely respect the decision. 
Definitely the right call, I think. I think people don't spend meter like this as often as they should. We get the punish on the DP attempt. Wow. Command grab, and there's a perfect. Grant Odakai taking game number two. Okay. Little step back. Cancel the drive rush really early there. Yeah, it just, man. The fact that Jazzo was able to find these straight hits is phenomenal. Because Grant is not being very obvious, like not following just a Agreed. set pattern like some lower level JP players will do, you know? Where you can just figure out, okay, here's the here's the hole where I just drive rush in and get the punish. Yeah, you're not uh, you're not hitting legend without a little bit of mix up in your game. <laughs> yeah, and now he hasn't even played the zoning game at all. Look at that, he's staying close to him, just like a character length away, playing the footsies game. Oh, and the shimmy into the big punish. I need to relieve a little bit of pressure there with the drive reversal. Baits oh. out the amnesia. It actually just like has not been successful yet. Jazzo's had such a good read on when these reversals are coming out. Uh oh. oh time to block. Does get quit. caught by the low here. Still gonna be alive for one more interaction, but you're in burnout. This is kind of a check situation. The king is cornered. And unfortunately, uh, check turns to mate very quickly, especially with the OD portals. Getting those two portals set up represents such a, a multitude of options. Kind of puts you in a decision paralysis in a spot like that. That was a beautiful check, though, with that crouching light punch. Able to score the back throw with the punish counter. To the skies. Baits it out once again, Proxy. You are right. That is, what, four for four at this point? Definitely just has a crazy good sense of when those things are going to happen. Been so ready. Over and over, crouching medium. Go stop the Dragon Lash. Not much else afterwards. Oh, DP's right through the drive impact. Looks like he caught the ending frames of it because there was no armor. Oh, and a drive impact, very sneaky from that distance. Didn't look like it was going to quite connect with the wall, but it does in the end. Very nice spending of the meter here. Just to get your drive gauge back in order, which is so important against JP. Okay. Perry again, the great effect oh, runs through God, everything. Oh. This can, he can do it. He just decides that all of those are obstacles. It is obstacles to be conquered. Runs past everything to get the kill. And there's the crouching kick. Perfect. Perry coming through. Behind the back, Tatsu gets the DP at the end. Perfect parry again, goes for the punish counter. Sets up the portal. Yep, tapping that parry, definitely a good call. The ghost, that little step back, not falling for these little shimmies, but still okay. And look, I mean, if he's gonna keep drive rushing through all of your setups, might as well stay close, but if you get a little too close, you can get burned. Oh my God. Carry. Nice tech though. Resets things a little bit. Driving back from so far. Just the tip, Proxy. Just the tip. Able to score the throw and not enough to get the kill, but the crouching medium kick will do it. All right, round start here. Faking out, cutting the dash short. Look at the movement by Jazzo. Or another throw. Tries to bait out the OD Amnesia this time, but Grant doesn't bite. And try hard JB coming through with the raid. Thank you so much for the love tonight. Yeah, 
appreciate you, man. Thank you, as always. And again, congratulations for how strong you've been lately, man. Definitely well-deserved to get that level three coming through once again. Still not enough to close it out, but Jazzo has turned things around in a big way. Beautiful parry there on the drive. Impact attempt, saving Grand's life. But there it is, sweet chin music again, Proxy. That has been the great equalizer. Bro, the jump scare has just, again, been running past so many of these projectiles. We did find out really early into the life of the game that you can just kind of speed past some of this stuff from JP, but it's so hard to do uh, outside of practice. Oh, the perfect parry menacingly walking forward. All right, again, just checking with those Jinrai kicks. But wow, what a pickup. And now we're back into the zoning game plan. Don't get too obvious, though. You've been blown up once or twice before already. In a bit of a scramble situation. Baits out the DP here. That's going to be a kill. Yeah, round goes down. This is really, really tough now. Jazzo a little bit behind on the meter game. But you can't let yourself far too far behind on the life game here. Oh, my God. This is set point. Nice, what a reaction. Coming out to the Jinrai is not letting anything rock for free. Ouch. Uh-oh, we're just gonna send it. Level three, there it is. And Dude. just like that, Jazzo fought valiantly to try and make this comeback. But Grand Todakai's JP proved to be just a little too much to overcome tonight. Dude, I really like the confirm there as well. The actual combo he went for goes for the teleport after the OD portal sets him closer every single week with that. But we are going to get into our next match. It's going to be Zach Box facing off against Legendary Cat, I believe it was. Uh-oh. Not everyone's favorite outfit. Okay, already getting started there. Party started with crouching medium kick. Takes a huge step backwards, and off the shimmy gets another great reward. All right, but there we go. Immediately into the spinning bird kick. Dashes forward immediately into the back throw, and then using that distance to set up the fireball. Oh, well, these characters have such good movement speeds, right? Being able to just set up this micro spacing so effectively to score those whiff punishes. Ooh, that step underneath is able to get through. Gets to the OD legs. And the drive rush into the throw. Okay, nice setup to get to maintain pressure, but we just hold up forward immediately out of that. Oh my god! Blowing right over the fireball. What a smart option from Zach. And then the resetting of the pressure to go straight into level three. You'll gain yourself a ton of that drive meter back. Get yourself a huge advantage. And now one interaction will do it. We just apply pressure to get into the burnout. But there's the back throw. Heavy leg. And there we go. Finally pokes out and is able to take game number one. Dangerous situation there, but no fear shown from uh, from Cad. Oh my God, nice check. Drive rush is always getting answered there. The elbow out, very plus, is able to find a throw. Loops continue. If it ain't broke. Oh, it just keeps going. There's the perfect. You can't let Jerry build up that snowball. Dude, these whiff punishes are from so deep that you can't even special cancel to convert off of them. Crazy no, normal. has to let it rock, but it's checking every single time, letting Zach get, letting Zach know. Again, beautiful blow up there on the fireball, just scoring that <laughs> that low crush. Wow, and because it actually gets the connection, it plays the animation. The fireball goes straight under her. There's the jump in, easy DP though. Nice. Nightclub's back in it. 
Evening up the rounds here, potentially gonna even up the games. OD Fireball is parried, and we're able to get the Fireball of our own over it. And then the anti air to follow. Good string of events here from Zach. We're gonna go level two. Spinning Bird Kick is gonna be blocked. This is a massive punish now. Goes right into the level three. Buy time to build back up that drive gauge while adding up a ton of damage. Oh, and then the wow. shimmy. My God, the way that Cad has been checking Zach so often here, whether it be with like max range whiff punishes or a beautiful check with the crouching light punch. Yeah, it's all been coming down to footsies here for Cad overall. Things have just been looking amazing again, especially impressive against Chun Li, who is just like again high movement speed, really designed for this type of uh, this type of fight that we're taking. Another throw to come through, but there we go. OD up kicks, not gonna be able to hold on to that for too long. Wow, and even after the perfect fairy, still is able to get things ripping through. Jesus, it actually converts into the round over two games already on the board. Looking to potentially close this out on one more. Jump in, able to score the throw. Drive rush is right on in to get those plus frames. Man, Zach has very consistently been blowing up that low fireball over and over. Let's see if we can really get something started, get a point on the board here. Definitely was looking for the reset in that spot. Instead, it's just gonna turn into another level two. Potentially gonna be able to go into burnout here, depending on how we end it. Uh oh, you left her alive. You left her with CA. Oh no, it's gonna oh. go back to full gauge now. A ton of damage to come. Dangerous situation here, and there it is. Again, checked with the low. Ends the way that it starts. Legendary Cad moving up 3-0. And Zach had some really... Yeah, I believe this is going to be our first match here in top 24. We're going to have one more after this, and then we're going to be playing top eight qualifiers. So here we go. Pink trench coat. Already establishing that parry game here against the fireballs. And you can see the moment that Paladin's first fireball is perfect parry, that's when he stops throwing fireballs, right? Slows down a little bit and then gets punished on the very next one toss. Okay, good conversion, good amount of damage. Wakes up with a jab though, straight out of there off the counter hit. Great confirm. Oh, and that step forward. I think if we had kept it max range, that standing heavy kick might've worked, but that step forward, we had to go for the DP in that spot. Oh my God. Dude, on the longest run up, just DPs everything. You see Paladin just trying to take things slow and steady. Punk in control, though. It's going to be so difficult to score those anti airs when Kami has that dive kick available. Great back dash. Yeah. I say, it doesn't matter how slow and steady you want to take it. You're kind of at the whim of how Kami wants to play it here. Nice throw attempt, though. I get whipping the normals there, just trying to keep the pressure up. Oh no, threw out a standing heavy punch. The recovery on that so long, but Punk not actually capitalizing how I thought he was going to here. Still has that corner pressure, not anymore. Oh my God, the solar plexus from max distance. It's gonna go level two. Not enough to get the kill though. Still so scary is in burnout. And now you can't chip puck out. You have to find one hit. Oh, it tries to go for the collarbone breaker. Okay, back out of burnout, but it's not gonna matter. Finds the crouching light kick and is able to confirm Punk with the godlike stuff. Execution. Well fought. I love you, bro. Oh no, her jacket. <laughs> All right, it's cool, no panic. 
Okay. Punish. All the way to the wall, gets the crouching fierce, taps on the parry. Punk, not looking too concerned about it. Does get a punish counter fireball and is able to get the push away and get some dungeon charge. It's gonna help with some of this damage. Yeah, scores that heavy katsu there as well. Wow! Just narrowly avoiding the palms. Beautiful stuff there from Punk. Facing is on point, able to score the throw, another round on the board. Continuing to secure in the strongest way. Takes a huge step forward. Confidence is key though for Paladin. And a Punk on the other side. Same thing, so bring it on. You have a perfect parry hitting its mark here. Also going immediately into that drive impact. Trying to whittle down that drive gauge as much as possible. And there it is. Burnout. Gotta watch out for the drive impact. What a challenge. That was forced knockdown stage as well. Oh, is gonna go for level three. Oh. Definitely the best call gonna come out of burnout here. This is huge. Again, still not enough to kill. You gotta watch out. Punk just has to find that one crouching light kick, but it's crouching medium kick that is gonna come out here for Paladin. Right, definitely press that confidently and at a good spacing, so it is able to open things up. Oh, minus eight, big punish. Great no reaction from Paladin, right? Not taking the bite from the shimmy. And now getting the light confirmed there with the DP. Beautiful throw tech though from Punk. Still has to find a way to escape here from the corner. Okay. Dude, continued jumping not gonna be able to get through does actually find the answer afterwards though was able to convert into the standing heavy kick after the drive rush oh and then again solar plexus from max distance i'm not sure what punk is seeing that's making him kind of flinch in a spot like that but man paladin is landing that so consistently and now a pixel of life and he's oh, dead just to confirm off the one dive kick is all it takes and punk has now secured a 2-0 lead here up against paladin and Paladin's been really keeping pace with him too, right? Dude, it's just so unfortunate that that super doesn't kill. What a great capitalization from Punk, though. Paladin can't allow that to phase him here. What? A punish on the dive kick, Proxy. Okay, there for Punk, he's able to find the throw afterwards as well. And then the double dash. Dude, Punk is playing with so... I mean, this guy's always confident, but the way he's moving, a little different right now. Yeah, I mean, his movement, his reactions are nothing to scoff at here. But nice. Paladin able to score that standing heavy punch, immediately goes into the throw, gets a counter hit with it, and wow! Just takes it to the skies with the Tatsu. I also didn't know that worked. <laughs> We've seen this a couple times already. Punk, even when he gets behind, still confident, still in it, still in control, all the way to the wall here is able to find the throw for the second time. Yeah, but dealing with Cammy's corner pressure is something else, man. And look at that. Round is over. Oh no, we opt not to spend. I agree with not spending there, right? You want to hold on to that meter going into this next round because it is set point. I feel like you usually want to spend the level one, but Punk knows best. He's, if he's confident he's going to be able to close the round, then he's, uh, he's got the right call. Jump in. Perfect parry. Not going to spend too much, though. Obviously, heavily skilled damage at that point. Got to be able to score the throw. Goes for the jump in, but a perfect parry hits its mark. Goes for the back throw this time, trying to close the gap with the corner. Okay, level three. No, oh, the step forward, oh. the drop is huge. Oh my God. That was tragic. Still alive, gets one more opportunity, but man. Wait, what? Okay, I thought that was gonna connect for a second, but is gonna get chipped out there at the end. Dude, Punk, again, just great capitalization on all of the errors, all of the mistakes, all of the greed coming out from Paladin all across the set. Player to get Paladin. to watch in that game. And uh, excited to get to see how he works here in Street Fighter as well, facing off against uh, Adrian.
staying, uh, you know, not quite rocking Ken, but staying on brand with the ye banana colored JP. <laughs> Got the yellow robes. Okay, good way to start here. Close that distance. And also, I didn't realize how much he was grinding. 23rd legend? Your boy is in there. Ooh. Like going up against Adrian. Adrian, New York here. So back kick. Yeah, I, I think that this matchup, uh, it felt like in the beginning, this felt unwinnable for Guile. And uh, the more I've watched some of the top Guiles kind of deal with it, uh, it definitely still feels like it's a JP matchup, uh, JP favored matchup, absolutely. But I don't think it's just quite as bad for Guile as we thought it was. Yeah, I mean, the main reason why it's difficult for Guile is because Guile, you know, quintessential zoner, it forces him to play that rushdown game, right? Which is not exactly uh, something that Guile is very comfortable at. He definitely has the tools to do it, especially in this game, right? But again, having to close the gap on someone who zones way better than he does is get it difficult. There's the Snapdragon suplex. Drive rush right on in for the low. Jump in, easily answered. Gonna set up the portals. He's just gonna chill, leave a full screen, trades with the boom, a trade always in your favor. Chat, stop baiting me with P5A. <laughs> One day, we'll return. And yeah, just patience in burnout so you can't make any hasty decisions. But now you're gonna have to guess for your life here. Unfortunately, does not make the right guess. Still going to be alive, but a horrible situation, especially with both the portal set up. The chip continues to come through. Signs of life. Uh, or, you know, or not. <laughs> you know, I was trying to keep it. Nice use of the drive impact there. Push him to the wall. <laughs> Straight into the next round, though. Going to start things off trying to set out these Sonic booms. Defy, don't put, don't you put that evil on me. <laughs> yeah, ch ch chat really stuck on this P5 arena thing. Sorry, best we can do is dancing all night. Oh my God. <laughs> Jesus, bro. Follow up right. again. Even fighting for the corner. Banana can looking comfortable. Adrian needs a hope here. Has to try to find a way in. Goes for the dash and immediately backs up right into the range of the portals. Mm, put into burnout. This is really, really bad. You've got to maintain this space. You cannot let JP push you farther away. He gets the crouching medium kick. He's kind of leaning on the booms a little bit here. Almost out of burnout already. This was relatively inconsequential until the little jump in. A little bit extra damage from Banana Ken, but we're about to get out of burnout, like I said. Oh, no. Tried to find the right opportunity to go for the drive rush. But he did go for OD spike. Break it on through. What a check. Again, we talk a lot about players just being a wall with their defense. That's exactly what Banana Ken is doing right now. There's the Pierce. Yeah, he's representing one of the most annoying parts about this matchup that I think some people looking from the outside don't see how annoying it is. The fact that he can set up the portal and then he can rep parry for whatever projectiles you throw at him is such a huge deal. The fact that he can nullify your projectile while also kind of threatening his own and making it to where you have to make rash decisions is such a horrible situation. Just that fact alone is so big in this match. I mean, this is the zone where Adrian wants to be, right? Back may be up against the wall, but finally able to close the gap. That's a Manny zone, by the way, with a $20 direct contribution Woo! straight into the match. Reno, thank you very much for the support to the players. We appreciate you, man. Thank you. Oh, there it is. The stun on deck sets up the portal for the Wombo combo, but drops it. Dude, he pulled the Uzi. <laughs> the mini booms, a lot of good damage on Chip. There we go, level two, snap the fingers. Might be snapping us all the way to game three, but Adrian is able to weather the storm. Does get finally get caught by the low, and that is gonna be another game. Banana Ken up 2-0. No yeah. sympathy for Guile, you gotta have sympathy for the devil sometimes, man. Especially when he's going up against the bigger devil. <laughs> the devil but meaner. <laughs> exactly. 
Okay, good to make him hold the parry there. I like that threat. Able to get the counter hit confirmed as well. Good amount of damage to the drive gauge, but a nice whiff punish. Crouching medium punch, such a good counter poke. The boss has got a good point. JP has only been on the uh, been on the list for one game. Guile's been on the list for a couple in a row. Somehow he still keeps his pilot's license, bro. Hey, he's here. So cancel had an opportunity dude jumping heavy kick from uh from jp is huge kyle maybe could have got away with the crouching fierce but it could have been a trade even at that point yeah i mean these trades with the sonic booms they're not going to be good there is a trade unfortunately tries to put out a crouching medium kick just a little too far away banana ken capitalizing on the situation and now it's set point yeah, that's so tough because uh, when you go for the bazooka knee in situations like that, a lot of the time Guile does come out on top, but that's a great amnesia and a better throw from Banana Ken again. I mean, really, it's just that Banana Ken has been controlling the flow of the entire match, right? Adrian has not been able to get a game plan started since this set has begun. Yeah, there definitely have been some moments of brilliance on offense as we close the distance occasionally. But again, just how often Banana Ken understands the matchup and how often he's able to get the portal set up. It is the difference maker in this matchup. Finds the level three, a ton of damage to the drive gauge, a ton of damage to the life. Full screen again for Adrian, but we're going to go straight for the jump in and the pressure. Yeah, all that offense is unfortunately fleeting, and now your back is up against the wall, burnt out. Tries to go for the drive reversal there. Oh, yeah, you ain't drive impacting through those. <laughs> Again, the Uzi, bro. Use all of it to be able to get that burnout here, but closing the distance is gonna be so difficult. Even with your opponent in burnout here, it still feels disadvantaged in the zoning game. You just have to dash when you can. Dash blocking is everything right now. They're trying to follow up behind the booms with the drive rush, but there we go. One punish counter is all it takes. Banana Ken with a decisive 3-0 victory. Becomes even Dude. more of a factor. Yeah, Strider's definitely another one of those players too that you see that, uh, you, uh, some people know him from other games. I see somebody talking about his able. Yeah, it's definitely, uh, you can see shades of that in his gameplay for sure, but immediately the counter hit to find the knockdown here. But like and you said, right off the bat. It's facing off against Nephew. Nephew, obviously one of the toughest customers you could have here, gonna be on the jury. Definitely a super strong contender, always has been. Yeah, you talk about one of the toughest customers. This is one of the toughest matchups too for Marisa, right? But it's not currently looking like it. <laughs> oh, okay. The DP there stops the Superman, uh, Superman punch. Just get that extra bit of damage and keeps that pressure on, but a nice tech resets neutral. Oh, what a challenge there with the EX guard stance. I always said I didn't like this Marisa costume that much, but uh, the red is changing my mind. I like the red a lot. Bro, it's fire. It's a fire costume. The, the suit pants? Pants suit? Both, technically. <laughs> <laughs> Look at these charge Gladiuses too. Just mixing up the timing on Gladius is so key to being an efficient Marisa. Oh my god, help! You're dead. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately there's no helping you out of this one. <laughs> that is painful. <laughs> Choose your forearm on that too? That's, that's yeah. extra brutal. I never we never it never bro. kills, so I never get to see the, the stop motion. Oh my god, the freeze frame, looking good. I'm trying to swing with that big standing heavy punch. He's going to connect here with the standing medium punch, though. Full corner carry, goes for the safe jump as well. Thanks, that Superman. Okay, find your knockdown. Good the Gladius again, just harassing the drive gauge, prepping that armor. Gets the connection again with the counter hit. No, no, chat. He calls her two touch Teresa with a T. All right, there's the throw. Tries to go for another one, getting that throw loop set up. I love the challenge from Strider. Knows that you're going to immediately follow up the fireball with the drive rush, so just goes immediately into the parry stance. Fireball answers a lot. Nephew, good structure of pressure to be able to get started on this one. Step backwards here, perfect parry, very nice. Again, a little bit extra damage. Is gonna spend the level one though. Interesting because it's not gonna deal very much damage, but it does stall your opponent's ability to gain drive gauge back, which definitely could be a part of it. Yeah, and the corner carry on it is enormous as well, right? Immediately sent Strider right up to the wall. Beautiful whiff punish there. The punish counter, but misses the confirm, that's all right. 
He's able to clean it up and take the round. So from Nephew. Yeah, setting us up for the one-to-one -one here on the round. Strider, if he can make this 2-0. Like call it curtains early for Nephew here, but Nephew keeping things going. Did bait the parry out and had the right option, but unfortunately on the walk back took a little too far of a step back, but still is able to return to pressure. Is able to find that touch again. Uh-oh, what a reaction there with the level three. Now you know history. Uh-oh. Especially in burnout. You can see Nephew buffering, though. Oh, oh my, my god! god. <laughs> That's so tough! That's so tough! What a hell of a shimmy there from Strider up 2-0! That felt like it was in slow motion to pain. True pain. Answer though, very nice. Goes for the OD, is gonna get the corner carry. Yeah, he always goes for the OD uppercuts there so he can get the knee into the step kick, the Spartan kick, because that gets the most corner carry for Marisa, right? Then once he gets you to closer to the corner, he switches up into the Superman punch to score the safe jump. Miss spaces the command throw though. So Nephew is able to get up because of that, but this time it's not misspaced. That does so much damage. Bro, mounted. Hate for that to happen to me. But here we go now. The, oh no. Charges up the punch. And just, just Nephew is walking into these standing medium punches. It's hard to fault Nephew for that though. You, it feels like you've got to be aggressive on offense. You've got to represent yourself. You've got to be able to, willing to take some space. So you have to move forward to some degree. It's just Strider's pressing so well in all the right places. That's going to be a conversion. That's going to be a level three. That's going to be the set for 801 Strider. 3-0, just like that in a very difficult matchup for Marisa on top of that against one of the best jury players in North America. Phenomenal performance there. Yeah, with that said, Nephew, definitely not done yet. Still going to be in it. Headed to the loser's bracket, which is a little high kick. Or being able to go for the step back with Crouching Heavy Punch. Uh, there's a lot of upside for sure. And I think it plays perfectly into Punk Strength. Bro. This Ken outfit. I don't care. I love it. I love this costume so much. Chad, am I crazy? Is this costume goaded or am I stupid? I love it. I brush in. Oh, oh no, trying to go for a throw that early, but misses the confirm with the spiral arrow. Gonna get blown up for it and carried to the corner. Someone said stupid and someone said L take. That hurts, man. Come on. <laughs> oh, DP. this is gonna hurt as well. <laughs> Not gonna take it out though, still okay. Oh, twice in a row, a ripped tech is going to take a chunk of the life bar. And that's all it really takes. Again, the reward on those uh, on those shimmies from Kami is so damn high. It can turn a, like a four to five interaction game quickly into a two to three, depending on how much meter we have. All right, just go. Wow, okay. Crouching light punch immediately into the throw. Drive rush on in. Okay, we go for the side swap here. Carried a little <laughs> bit out of the corner, but now we have the opportunity to push back. We said this Ken skin looks like a rejected fist of the North Star villain. I need you to relax, okay? That's a really well thought out burn. I need you to stop. Don't stop and thinking about this so much. Why Why does he have the jacket sleeves unzipped? I, no one actually does that in real life. Hey, well, the super is going to be able to get the kill. So, you know, you can you can't be able to take it out on him. It's fine. Poke that man's back and his neck. Well, maybe you should get a jacket that fits, bro. <laughs> Just oh my god. Not Punk. Kyo Ken. Oh my god. Holy. Able to get the first one here. Finds that knockdown. Dashes up with the jabs. Uriel with a nice counter poke there. Kind of recognizing the turn was over. Takes it back to the crouch medium. Gets back to mid screen. Definitely a good call. Look at the range here that Uriel is staying at. Of course, threatening that crouching medium kick range at all times. Mm, that's a nice counter hit confirm as well. And that's the, the patented Ken headbutt. Drive rush, heavy punch. Dude, it's so high priority. 
There's the shimmy as well. Look at that link with the crouching medium kick afterwards. And Uriel closing out the round. <laughs> Ken was so broken in KOF 98. Shut up, bro. He does kind of look like KOF character though, too. It's like Robert, if you gave Robert a leather jacket. I wouldn't hate it as much if it was like a blazer instead of a leather jacket, because he's nah, got the like turtleneck it. on, bro. I don't care. The turtleneck and chain. So comes through again, crouching fierce, good amount of damage. Trade comes through, but at this life total, and at this position, you can't afford to take a trade. Uriel with a clean hit, though, is able to get that side switch. Oh my god, what a check. Set right into the corner, and that's going to be the round here. Punk spending all of the drive gauge, none of the meter, holding on to it for the next round. It's like Ken looks like a guy who thinks he looks like Dante. Got the throw. <laughs> Bro, have you seen my mullet? I'm in my midlife crisis. All right, but there's the knockdown. Goes for the crouching heavy punch for the plus frames. Ooh, the walk forward with the jab. Really nice spacing there. Standing heavy punch actually does connect for the second time. This one, two. Level one is definitely a good call. Gets the throw. Pressure in the corner. Punk wow, that was hella meaty. Might be able to close it on this. Level two isn't enough. Even if it's not, this is a terrible spot. I mean, Yuro could still bring this back, right? With one well-placed button into a drive rush. Uh-oh. Yeah, uh -oh, like you said, this is how it can start. But what a brave press there. Tried to reset things and not let it happen again. Oh, good patience from Punk to block most of that, though. Didn't want to fall for anything crazy. At that point, I know this, like, the, the meme, whatever. You're in burnout. The lead is that crazy. I take the throw sometimes. <laughs> Just chill. All right, not gonna go for the side swap here. Instead, just goes for the coast to coast. But wow, walking right into the wake up buttons from Punk. Beautiful shimmy again. How big these stages are. The corner carry of both these characters is phenomenal. Just as it is that conversion from Punk. Resets into a throw. Oh my God, and the hooligan pressure works out again. Two games and a round. Potential finish here for Punk and immediately sees the green stuff, gets the punch on the jab. The stop sign is crazy. Uh oh. It's the infinite. Just take the throw. If it ain't broke, take the throw, baby. Just take the throw. All oh the my way. god, bro. Well, please. For the streets. Please. Wake up with the jab. Okay, we're in there. Punk wanted it to. No, he tried to go he for tried, the throw. He tried, he tried, he tried, he tried, he tried, he tried, he tried. He's going for throw on every interaction now, dude. It's over. Best grappler in the game. Uh -oh. oh my god, not enough to chip the CA. Sit up and shut down. Or shut down. Either way. Look, it's round kind of time, bro. Dude, a round apiece. Punk still threatening the set, though. Nice to be. Nice DP. That chat's gonna be alive for that one. All right, but here we go. Tatsu right on in. Oh, and the shimmy again, trying to go for that throw tech and to get blown up by the level one. Oh, what a back dash. Okay, is it enough? It yeah, it is. is. Uriel showing some signs of life here, getting a point on the board. Okay, so maybe we're able to get this answer here. Might come back through it. Jabs, that's the drive rush. Jin right pressure. Gets the punish counter with the standing light kick. Knockdown comes through. Sends him back to mid screen. Doesn't change too much though. Uriel sitting on a fat lead right now. But that lead is getting evaporated. A little at a time until the DP. You know, turn it back. Dragon Lash kick right on in. Not going to help him get some offense started though. Punk immediately answering back. And now we're in a familiar position once again. 
Hi, Shimmy. I am Tom coming through. Good to see you, buddy. 32 months. Hope you're doing well. It's all those JoJo pants. Those went crazy, by the way. That was a crazy thing for you to buy. <laughs> Alright, he's able to get the pro tech. Trying to check more often with the crouching medium kick I'm noticing here from Uriel. But anti-air with the super coming Punk's way. All up after the jab, knockdown. Step forward, looks for the shimmy. Uriel crouching medium, well informed. Not gonna let that shimmy come through. Dash forward, whipping that normal there, trying to force Uriel to bite and press the button, but there we go. Gets the wall splat, has the level three on deck, and that should be plenty for Punk to close things out. Jesus, dude. Nice from Punk. I mean, that's coming off of a round where he <laughs> tried to finish it off with the infinite, couldn't quite do it, but still oh. in the pot. I want to try and beef that up even further as we close ourselves even closer to this top eight. But it's time to get started. Dude is going to pick the Cami. He's going to have the. She got the jorts on under the trench coat? <laughs> Cami with the jorts, the apple bomb jeans. <laughs> Here we go, trying to go for a little bit of a shimmy. Banana Ken not going to bite. What's up so far have been good. Does get the punish counter. And close that distance a little bit. And Ooh. is able to throw a dive kick. Okay, yo. JP's pretty good. Banana, Banana Ken's Ken pretty is good as well. Banana Ken is pretty good. Off rip? Just overhead, just like that? That's how you feel? I love the way that Banana Ken opts to be... Opts to really mix up the approach of JP, right? He he will sit back and play that classic zoning game, but he is not afraid to get in and get dirty. Go for those drive rush mix-ups. Keep the pressure on you up close. Stay just outside of that range to whiff on the shoot. Might have been something going on with the connection there, because I saw Dude do the... Uh the universal sign for checking to see if it's laggy of the step back and jab twice from full screen. Hopefully not affecting too much here. So get the jump forward though, and is able to get the standing heavy kick afterwards. A quick first game here to Banana Ken. There are some languages in fighting games that we all speak, and <laughs> full screen jab twice is one that I think everyone can relate. <laughs> Down, back, jab, 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 jab. <laughs> the classic. Be trying to go for that standing heavy kick is going to get blown up. And it's so difficult to approach whenever that portal is out on the screen, right? Just just the threat of, if, is he going to go for a spike coming out of it? Is he going to teleport the moment that you try to close the gap? It really is the most difficult thing to play around on JP when he's doing that zoning option. Okay. Harassment coming through does actually break the drive impact as well. There's a jab though from Do. Toss right back into the corner though. Should be able to get this kill. No, not quite. Oh, yeah, not enough. Might be able to chip at level one potentially here. OD Amnesia bets it all, does get the hit. Level one, not enough, but full screen, a nightmare for Do. Yeah, that's it with the chip damage. If Do loses this round, we might actually go Guile, potentially. I could see that, right? Might as well just go back to the main. Because so far at the moment, Cami not working out the way that Do was intending. There's a backdash on the throw attempt, and now we're back to square one again. Okay, this time his uh, attempt at a poke there with the crouching medium punch. A little unlucky, but still okay. Full screen once again, but super aggressive on the choices. Be able to get all the way across, but then back to the corner. Sets up the level two, jumps to the other side for the throw. Nice parries there, though, from Knuckle Doo, avoiding the situation altogether. But Anakin actually burns himself out. And oh, is going to lose the round for that. 
I think he wanted to go level two in that spot also, because if he was able to get the activation, there was the potential for Duda to not only maybe get chipped, but just have to deal with the mix itself. Right throw in the corner. Uh-oh, it's loop time. Are we gonna aim at the infinite? No, stop short here. Oh, but OD Amnesia jumps right on in. Dude was able to weather that storm pretty, uh, pretty effectively there with the parry. Going for the parry in response to OD Amnesia can be scary because obviously JP is just going to want to walk up throw. Oh, that dive kick perfectly changes up the timing on that jump. Jump in a really good spot to be able to go through. Dive kick right at the feet is able to get the trade. Uh, level one. I don't think that's what we wanted there. Potentially not. Doesn't enough to kill, but still finds a throw afterwards. And with all that talk of potentially switching, Dew is able to absolutely just you know, tighten the bootstraps one to one. So yeah, I can make it work with Cammy. All it took was a little adjustment, right? A little bit of feeling out the matchup here, seeing Banana Ken's particular flavor of JP. If we can keep that momentum rolling now. So far, so good. Yeah, I mean, as far as keeping momentum goes, isn't quite enough to kill, but still a good opportunity and is able to maintain pressure. It's rare to be able to like get that much offense going still after OD Amnesia connects, but do finds a way. But rising normal there, chasing up to the skies. Okay, Banana can be a little bit more airborne. Let's see how this plays out for him. Do once again going for that side swap consistently, but uh, yeah, take it to the skies is kind of working out so far in this round for Banana Ken. Oh, isn't able to get everything, but still okay. In burnout, chip would have been enough at that point. Went for the meaty spire, was able to find the jab afterwards. Final round, so important. Putting up 2 1 would be monstrous in this spot, and do gets the first clean touch. All right, here we go, spending it all. Trying to capitalize on our lead. Right in on the level two. Tries to go for the dive kick to catch him. I respect the decision. Now the tables have turned. OD Amnesia using burnout. Proxy. Oh my god, it doesn't connect, but it's not gonna. No, doesn't get level one. Still gets the hit and the kill, anyways. Unreal able to turn that around. Again, living and dying by the burnout there. Dew is going to keep it locked in on Cam before it could be the last match. Okay, push back away and is able to get the portal set up. Nice use of the spin knuckle there, avoids the ghost. Ooh, and we're starting to bait Owen Amnesia's in all the right places here. And just watches him parry. He says, go ahead, drain that meter. What's up? All right, nice check there with the crashing medium kick. Dude, closing out the round. Nice and clean. Simple and clean. Oh, this 
good. Takes a fourth of the life off the table. Is going for the level two very often. Pretty much every time we have the opportunity, we'll get that standing heavy kick on. Is able to push through, spends that drive gaze to break it. Cancels out the level two. Is able to maintain some amount of confidence here in neutral as we're a little closer to the wall, but still okay with the dive kick. Goes to the EX here to get some room to set up the portals. Great DP reaction though from Dew. Oh my God, Proxy, just like this, it's looking more and more likely like we're gonna see a game five. Might be OD Amnesia gets the punish. Not gonna be able to get the side swap though. He's gonna have to fight out of the corner still. Jump forward, gets answered by the portal here. Both in burnout is huge, especially with the level two activated right away. That jump in was... You're just gonna jump? You just held up forward there? <laughs> Why not? And now here we go, but Anna Ken, so he gets that point. Sets up the portal. Teleports right on in. Scores a counter hit, but resets into a grab. Ooh, EXTP. A, yeah, Meaty Spire not going to work in that spot. OD Amnesia way too early there. Feels like it maybe was an execution error at that point. And that's going to cost you the game. Almost. We've seen this once before already. Oh, the chip damage there right at the end. Knuckle Dude taking it the distance here. Game five. Dude had the super afterwards as well. Crazy back and forth. Two to two, like you said. That big tech is even bigger. Get yourself some room. Jumping unanswered. Again unanswered. Again holding up Just forward. Yeah, just allowing it to happen here. Maybe a little paralyzed by the fear there, you know, of the dive kick coming in. There we go. No bird watching. Full screen. Bro, Do is holding nine. Oh my <laughs> god. And he's just getting away with it for free. There we go. Cannon strike coming on in. Drive impact gets the stun. Knuckle Dude should be able to close this round out easily. Just with the right routing. Has to spend the level one, but that's all right. Now the tables really have been turned. Proxy Knuckle Dude sitting at set point. Ooh, it's a really good jump in response to the drive rush, actually. But okay, there's a jump in his own. But Anna can knock down, sets up the portal. That DP kicks him in the top of the head. His ponytail is shorter. He gets away from that. Again, it just after a couple good dive kicks. It's really put this anti-air game so on the back foot for Banana Can. Knockdown comes through. Here's the level three. Mostly, I feel like the damage is great, but getting your own drive gauge back is so important right now. Yeah, able to build it up in a big way. Spends it immediately, though, with the OD portal straight into the drive impact. And we have it. Final game, final round. Do going into it, though, with full meter. Yeah, definitely a big difference maker into this one. Tries to go for the ghost dive kick. Answers perfectly. Also, small thing. I just appreciate how the character portraits in the back have their outfits. True, actually. That's a nice touch. That's a medium kick. Not going to get there. Gets the jump with Fierce. Turns into a throw. It's back, though, though, so not much pressure afterwards. Again, that portal just paralyzing you in neutral. There's too many options from it. You just don't want to approach when it's on screen. Okay, and just like that, the perfect parry. 
Gets the punish with the drive impact for maximum damage here. Gotta see a side switch. Absolutely scores one into a level two. Trying to go for the, no, doesn't go for the burnout option, but the burnout option happens anyway. There was one more item left. Took that step forward to try and go for the punish here. Burnout, jump forward, gets the throw. Not enough, still okay. Shimmy oh, comes Shimmy! out. <laughs> oh, DM has got a whiff and dude takes it by the skin of his teeth. But we do have winner's side top eight already set. Just got to see who's going to qualify through the losers. The Chun-Li mirror. So we'll call it a, uh, a pseudo team kill. Setting us up. Yeah, absolutely. Unfortunately here, one of these Chuns have to go, but they're going to look good while doing it. But that was nice. Action damage afterwards. The hop over. Let's get you back to mid screen, which is definitely a really good situation here as the fireballs come back and forth. But it doesn't matter how much you reset. Jug takes a step backwards out of the Hosanchu, but still, Footsies end up going his way. Terrence with a knockdown. Wake up level one. It is going to connect. Dude, they are so back and forth. Right, nice hit to the fireball there. Reaches for the legs. Not going to let that Hazancha get away for free. You know you're all of your character's own tricks, but still not quite enough as we ships in the night. Oy, and then the flip. Very nice. The Hazancha finally closes it an eternity going into round one. Okay, then jab, worked out nice. That's a good amount of pressure through. Drive impact, tries to test the reaction time. Not gonna work out in that spot. Good conversion and able to go straight into level three. And is able to get the stun afterwards as well. Terrence, great way to be able to secure, put yourself in game one. Does connect. Yeah, again, checking that dash four there with the five P. Let's say five A. Oh my god, and again, the reaction time is looking crispy here, but isn't able to get very much off of it. Oh, going for the big jump in. Nice anti air. Really tries to go for the fireball after. Look at that following behind. Time with the jab. Stand block is on you. And then he goes for the DP. I love situations like that. Good call. All right. Puts him in burn out there with the heavy legs. What an answer back, though. Neutral jump. You got to be careful about going for those heavy legs. We talked about it before, Proxy, over at DreamHack Atlanta, that Chuns love to go for the heavy legs when you're in burnout to get those plus frames, but there is a gap. Okay. Oh, my God, again. It's been back and forth. The first drive impact that's almost always lost. Level one, Zach Balls after Terrence is able to pretty handily secure game one. A great answer back. Oh, same brain cell there, checking each other with a trade on the standing light punch. Okay, standing medium punch, trading fireballs back and forth a little bit, gets to jump in. 
is gonna go for the full conversion here. Does the level, have the level one, but no reason to spend it at that point. Yeah, no, tries to reset with a drive impact. Great reaction though from Terrence. Utilizing the drive reversal to keep Terrence locked down in the corner. Almost like an aggressive burst. Okay, chun -Li obviously, very high jump arc there. Pretty easy for her to anti-air herself. Check that attempt at a dash, uses the drive Ooh. reversal again. This time just to buy some real estate, pushes even farther into the corner rather than the maintain and gets the one hit conversion. Level two, great damage to the drive gauge. <laughs> yeah, no mix up for you, but instead the shimmy is gonna work out for Zach. <laughs> yeah, okay, relax. Stay on the ground, dog. Zach Moss, two games straight. Th that's what I'm talking about when I say Chum moves like water. You know what I'm saying? The way she just flows is so fun to watch. Wow, we were synchronized dancing for a moment. Oh, wow. Crouching medium kick immediately into the EX legs. Trying to mount some offense here, but he is going to get tossed back. Oh, my gosh. Actually, low profile that wakes up with the parry, though. Back in burnout. This is a dangerous situation. Tried to go for the hop. The Goomba Stomp not going to work out. Knocked out on the other side. Zach looking to convert. Level two potentially, but instead, Ooh. Terrence is going to get the answer. I like the backdash there from Zach trying to bait out a reversal from Terrence, but Terrence not gonna not gonna be on the trigger like that. All right, there's the DP, flips right on out. The classic light punch. Bro, the meaties catching Terrence, mashing on Wake Up. Going to get killed for it. Which is extra crazy because I feel like the uh, the like active defense pressing on uh, situations like that has been working out just like that for Terrence. Uh, and honestly, for both players, pretty often. Yeah, some players like to press for sure. <laughs> Again, see, waking up with buttons there. This time, Zach and EBP coming through with the 50 big ones into the match wow, arena. Dude. Wishing everyone a good Christmas. Thank you so much. Absolutely. I'm, <laughs> I'm pulling the spirit right now, dude. Appreciate you, man. Thank you so, so much. Uh-oh, but there's the burnout. Aaron's trying to take this to a game five. Going for the chip damage. And there it is. Yeah, Zach able to close it out. Gets three games in a row. That was quite the turnaround. And again, after Terrence's first maybe game, he switched up and definitely more offline for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Man, Knuckle doing crossover. So DJ snuck his way in. This color is fire on this, this outfit. Crazy, actually. Bro, that's DJ in the Judgment Day for all my wrestling fans out there. <laughs> and now we're just playing. We're just breaking the sound barrier, Proxy. That's all we're doing right now. <laughs> yeah, why not? I mean, Duke to chuck the fireballs here. Uh, OD up kicks. Able to stop that one big approach. And that's one of the nice things about DJ. Obviously, he can't change the speed of his fireballs, which definitely nerfs his fireball game to a degree. But being able to be the only character that can throw multiple projectiles like that is a huge boon to him. Yeah, absolutely. Just shutting down. A really good anti-zoner fireball, right? And this is going to be huge. Absolutely going to be the round there, baiting out that EX flash kick. Round two. Yeah, when I say the chain, not being able to change his fireball speed nerfs his fireball game, that's not to imply that his fireball game is not good. Because man, this guy's a menace from all sides, uh, from all different ranges. Yeah, absolutely beautiful, perfect parry coming through, and Seto Kaiba coming through with the twelve dollars and thirty-one cents into the match arena. Uh, thank you so much. Rounding things out to one hundred and thirty-two dollars. 
appreciate you, man. Thank you very, very much again to you and to everybody, who, again, who has been helping out with this match. You know, $132, but I know we can get it even higher, man. Definitely make sure you check it out. Exclamation mark match Reno in the chat. Pull up the link for yourself. Also, shout out to PT Has No Head, who came through with $4.14 into the match, Reno. We appreciate you as well. Oh, yeah, I mean, one behind the Sonic Slicer. That's uh, that's checkmate. Not, not a lot I can do there. As soon as the Slicer actually gets out and he's able to get the full one after the cross, not much to really do. But that's a great trade for DJ there. If we get the sweep. Oh my god. All this damage coming off of the sway. Yep, right into the level three. Dude, this is what I need right now. My back hurts. <laughs> it's Stray X with the twenty-seven dollars and seventy cents, putting us at one sixty. Thank you all so much, dude. Again, huge shout out. Thank you so much for coming through. Thank you so much for helping us beef this thing up. One hundred and sixty. Oh, kind of crazy to see it grow that fast, man. Thank you. As G Tech coming through with a sub as well. Thirteen months. Appreciate you, man. Thank you very, very much. Uh, huge shout out to you. Thanks for helping out for the, with the tournaments as always, man. Definitely a, uh, a crucial part of our admin team. Yeah, the generosity does not stop, and neither does these perfect parries on the booms coming out from Crossover, getting so much mileage from them. Dude, gets a throw. Crossover, looking impressive right now. Goes in the OD as well. Okay, oh, you he tried to be, <laughs> tried to be a little tricky. Yeah, well, he's had so much control over the match that, you know, feeling himself. Dad. EX Fireball, dash up into the throw, another round down. That Exploded was Exploded Muffin coming through with the Prime. Four months, thank you. That's such an annoying thing to have to deal with there. The OD Fireball having to block after that. Not really much you can do in that spot. Ooh, okay. Away, but not quite able to get much goes for the show bot doesn't find it faking the fireball here but oh even with that uh, attempt at slowing things down not quite enough to be able to go through all right perfect carry coming through that's a great answer that's gonna go straight through i'm He's always in beat i'm always impressed with how far that level two goes to go through fireballs Pick up. Look at that. Plus frames right in your face with the EX Fireball scoring another throw. Crossover up 2 0 here against Knuckledew. And we're going right into it again. Oh my god. Actually had Duke kind of on skates there. Had a good opportunity, but wasn't quite able to find much afterwards. It's a little late on that slide. That slide has historically always been a great anti air. Oh, beautiful side swap. And then he's just letting the DPs rip. Oh, I like going for the faint air slasher there, right? After dude jumped the first fireball. Trying to bait him to go for another jump up. Here come the sways, though. Oh, a punish counter on the throw. Really good amount of damage out of that. Jab, good pressure, and finds the hit and the conversion. The level two comes through. All right. Set point now for crossover. one from a little too far gets the parry and that is yeah. just like cheat it feels like the as a cheat code to get full parry oh wow tries to go for a throw there and stry coming through with the gift subs five gift subs thank you so much hey but we're able to get the drive impact here do 
an opportunity to turn things around. So far, Crossover has looked ridiculously locked in. It's done a great job of uh, securing all these Ws here, but do a little bit at a time. Trying to make this work. Let's get the OD Fireball. Doesn't get too much afterwards. The heavy Cross forces the parry. Oh, there's another Sway. Trying to check and go into the throw. Perfect parry hitting its mark. Bro, his perfect parries have been so on point against these Sonic Booms. Oh, nice bait, though. Is able to find it off the crouching medium kick. Great amount of damage. Going to be full drive gauge for Dew. Big advantage. Yeah, Dew in a pretty solid lead here, so he is not stressed out to try and move forward, right? Willing to just sit back, telling Crossover, the ball is in your court. You have to make the move. To make the move, Crossover does, but eats a flash kick right to the face. Ooh, that was such a smart delay there. Put him in such an awkward spot. Has to jump forward now. Still in burnout. Gets the jab. Gonna go straight for level three. Okay. The That's CA. such a good decision, though. Freezing his drive gauge. Uh-oh. Anything now. Corner. Oh, oh, the raw flesh. Can <laughs> Dude, not, a scare, not afraid in the slightest, bro. Oh, sets up the blade for Oki, but the parry comes out from crossover. Dude just does nothing afterwards. Okay. The parry works out well. Good. I like the decision to step back there too. Goes for the parry on the fireball. Is able to throw two of his own. Once you've seen Guile take that step forward, you know he's not going to be able to engage in that situation. Kind of get your own advantage. Yeah, absolutely. Guaranteed at that point. Keeping track of your opponent's charge is just as important. Again, trying to find these perfect parries. Oh, nice. Again, with a beautiful punish there. I don't even think Dude did a single combo that round. That was just crouching medium kick in the dream. All the way through goes to the OD Fireball. OD Boom not going to get too much. Nice, perfect carry with the throw afterwards, as one does. Oh, and Me that. jumping. The timing on that jump was unreal. Able to get into the Boom loot. Finds the sweet, meaty Boom. I love these back dashes from Knuckle Blue also, the, the space he's creating. Perfect parry immediately into the air slasher. Ah, uh, a little too far for the throw, so okay. Upside down kick finds its mark. Oh, and there we go. Full dash in with a Snapdragon suplex. Time to hold the baby booms. Dude, and like we said before, the Uzi is just too strong. The little booms do so much chip damage there. And you can see he always does that exact same uh, start to it, especially when he's trying to look for chip and he's trying to look for burnout. Standing heavy kick into the super activation, the way that he structures it, that is a true block stream. So they can't just smash parry in the, in the middle of it. If they weren't already parrying, they are taking that chip. Oh, man. 2D getting blown up. I mean, dude, dude's really living on the razor's edge tonight in this bracket, huh? It has been so far. Bringing things back again to a game five after being down. Dash in, checking what the light punch is. Throw this time, punish counter. Oh my god, that's such a cheap block string. He's in such a good spot. Walks up for the jab again. Crossover played that so confidently, especially after the round that he had the game essentially in the bag. It ends on a crazy, uh, crazy flash kick. He's still playing this confidently. This is a huge boom for him. All right, Snapdragon suplex.
Look at that perfect parry. Immediately into a punish. Just trying to go for the corner carry option here, but does get blown up by a wake up super here from Knuckle Dew. Again, this is set point here for crossover. Dew does have the life lead though. Once Dew establishes that life lead, it's really where he does sit back and just tries to hang comfortably, play that more defensive style against crossover. That's a really, really nice answer though. To do trying to go for that step back like he normally does. OD up kicks actually connects, evens up the life totals now. Do stuck in the corner. CA for crossover. Anything will do it. There's the throw again. Not quite enough. Yeah, pairing all these. Needs to be careful though. A single hit, a single Sonic boom will be enough to score the kill. We can just get in distance for a level two. Oh, there it is. Hitting it with his own collar breaker. Dude, what a dude thing to do. Just the overhead. Now this is it. Final game, final round. Again, down to the wire. Standing medium kick. What a satisfying button. And I do seems to be in full control. Proxy goes for the punish with the Sonic Hurricane. Oh, that's a really nice jump in though. Doesn't get the full confirm though. It's a little too far. Tragic, tragic. We're still sitting on level three though. If we can find one way in, you could turn this around, right? But finding that way in has been proven to be very difficult. There it is. Clean jump in with the jumping light kick. Level three gets launched. Dude, getting yourself out of burnout is enormous here. This is such a big conversion, not only just for the damage, even up two bars of drive gauge now, coming back from the brink of things. Look at dude just backdashing. Doesn't want to be within sway range. Uh oh. That is a gutsy decision here from Crossover. Putting yourself into burnout while the baby booms were still active. Now this zoning game is even more potent. You can't afford to block any of these. Oh, the showbot. So plus, and then the stun for dude. He's going to be able to secure it. The first real attempt at a drive impact is going to be the one to actually For close all these it. torments that we are trying to run. Remember DNF? I do. Stay tuned. Okay, so wow, what a good start from Punk here. Spends a decent chunk of the drive gauge here, but is able to take a third of the life off. Takes that big step backwards. Finds the throw again on Strider. Don't forget about Skullgirls Sundays. Hey, listen, I love Skullgirls. It's one of my favorite games to watch. Hopefully, we can uh, we can fit it in every once in a while because, uh, man, I really like that game. It's my one of my favorite games to just be a spectator for. I'm, I'm too ass to play it. Uh, Tifa Torta, thanks for the bits. Here we go. Punk already utilizing a lot of these light normals to preemptively stuff Marisa. Jesus, what the level two backbreaker. One of the things that Marisa does struggle with is, is definitely being smothered, right? Her defense. And Cami is so good at smothering you. Just smothering you with all these light normals, making it so difficult for you to press out. Dude, the harassment in the corner. Back throw, though. This is huge. The roll reversal finds the dive kick a little too far for full conversion, but that's okay. All right, scores the throw. Yep, crouching heavy kick, the classic. Meaty is all hell, right into the level one. Bro, the movement, the movement of Cammy. Yeah, a pretty low committal place to just up back out of there, reset neutral. You've been feeling confident, you've been winning footsies pretty often. No reason not to. Got the Home Depot theme playing now. God bless. <laughs> Step back is good. Gets the standing medium punch. Is able to get that extra damage into the corner. Are you going for the throw after that? 
Mr. Mostafless, thank you so much. $40 Jesus, into the match arena. We are now at 200 We cannot thank you all enough for the support. This all goes to the players. Yeah, huge shout outs. Thank you very, very much. And again, like Jobber said, 100% of the yeah, match arena do always go to the players, man. Nice connection on the dive kick. Is able to find it. Goes for level two once again and takes the kill for the second time with this level two. The backbreaker too strong. Oh, goes for the Superman punch right there around start. Still wasn't able to blow up. Punk tried to go for the low, but recovered in time. Ooh, had the counter hit, but wasn't ready for anything to actually convert a little further. Gets the whip punish on Gladius. Dude, how often have you seen Gladius get killed like that? Me online all the time. Oh, come on. Follow my lead. <laughs> Shouts to Jake Ryan for the prime. Good to see you, buddy. Dude, Cammy Gaming indeed. Hope you're doing well, man. Hope you did well in the tournament today. I'm about to go look back through those results. Level three comes through. Put him into the wall. Oh, and just challenging. Wake up there with the crouching oh, light punch. The Rene coming through as well. Subscribe with the Prime for the first time. Thank you very much. It's the level two. I feel like I've seen this movie before. <laughs> level two kills again for Punk. I'm seeing more level twos after this Cami outfit has come out than I've ever seen. <laughs> There's something about, about the outfit that just Follow makes people want to do the level two, huh? Dude, Crone Zone with the first time Prime as well. Thank you very much. Appreciate you. And again, to everybody who's been supporting tonight, man. Thank you so much. Great spacing though from Strider. Going straight into the Spartan kick, trying to push as far to the corner as possible. Mm, standing heavy. Jump in, same side. Nice block from Strider. And then immediately Gladys, you know. Follow my lead. Oh my goodness, all these subs coming through the primes. Akashik, GG, thank you so much. Kajik, thank you very much. Good to see you. Hope you're doing well. Knockdown. Here we go. Oh, it actually gets a ground bounce, and it is actually going to be enough if you want to spend the level two, and we are definitely worth it. Do not be you, you can't be you can't be a prude. Spend the meter, take the kill, get out of these rounds. All right, spiral arrow. Great throw tech. Immediately going for that forward heavy kick. I love the way that Shire utilizes forward heavy kick. I mean, it is kind of a bit of a jump scare. Moves forward a decent amount. There's the command grab. Like I said, he doesn't use it too often, but when he does, it just always hits. That back is good. Goes for the EX. Wow, a huge amount of damage. Just crowd zone with a 55 direct contribution to the match arena, $256. Wow. It continues to grow and you've powered Strider. He said, a little, a little more money, you know what? I'm, I'm gonna have to get serious. Yeah, Two Strider one. finally getting a point on the board. Put your hair up and square up. Seriously, thank you to everybody who's been helping grow this match arena. It has been like an influx of like almost $200 in the past like less than an hour, dude. Thank you so much, man. Uh oh. Yeah, Good night. <laughs> Follow my lead. And Drive Shaft 108 with the tier one sub. Y'all are amazing right now. Thank you. This whole set's just about to be a, about to be thanking people with subs. All right, going for the back heavy punch there. Close enough. Trying to get that frame trap. Okay. That's a good follow through there. Yeah, very nice. Able to get the low crush there with the armor. It's a throw. Dude, Keandre coming oh through with God. the $44. Coming through into the match, Reno, a flat 300. Jesus, man. Oh, but here we go. Punk scoring the back throw. Saw that match, Reno, get even higher and said, hold up. Let me close this out. <laughs> get me out of this round, dog. <clears throat> Still in burnout, though. Trying to chip things out. 
trying to chip things down as much as you can without being obvious here. Maybe gonna look for the chip at that point instead. Just checks the legs. Two to two, 801 Strider. What is with these potential 3-0 comebacks? It just keeps happening. People are being backed into a corner and they are biting back, Proxy. And Comcap coming through with the prime sub as well. Thank you. There's a Superman punch. Patience into the charge, Gladius. Perfect parry from Punk. Doesn't even go for the side switch. Just ends up pushing as far to the mid screen as you can. Gets the punish counter. That's going to be the rest of the corner carry all the way to the wall. Oh, what a whiff punish. Immediately into the throw. I like that Strider just woke up holding nine. He said, let me out of here. Yeah, I like that from both players. I really like the, the risk-reward adjustment there from Strider, and I love that anti-air from Punk. Ooh, trying to shimmy. Punk does not chill on that one here. Gets the connection, goes straight through. Level two. Again, it's enough. Bro, I need that done to me. My back. My neck. Two to two. Punk. A round up. Oh! Oh, okay. We're good. We're good. It's fine. We're Nobody panic. <laughs> nice punish. Okay. Oh, that was our only our end proxy. <laughs> okay, good. Discord stream froze, and I was like, no, wait, please. <laughs> All right, standing heavy punch. Goes for the light gladius there, trying to keep it as tight as possible. What a challenge. Just reacting to the drive rush. The moment you hear the noise and see the green stuff. Tries to do it again there. This time Strider preemptively going for the Gladius, the stop sign. Oh my God, and that dive kick is perfection, but takes a step backwards, ends up getting the reset. Level one, it and is enough. enough. Oh my God, dude, Punk is able to do it. Oh, it was Strider. done earlier, right? Utilizing the, uh, with oh, Marisa at least, utilizing the armored stance as Death Wish comes through. With the gifted sub. Thank you so much for the support. And again, I just want to say thank you to everybody for helping beef up the Matcherino. Crazy support from you all. Exclamation mark Matcherino if you want to keep helping. But again, thank you for supporting the players and supporting TNS. 100% of that is going to go straight to these players' pockets as we continue forward. Dragon Lash gets parried. And it's just going to go straight for the combo here. Not going to look for the side switch. I definitely thought you were going to say, yeah, uh, I just want to say I like this cat outfit again. <laughs> Nah, I'm holding it in. <laughs> Every chat said L take and I'm stupid last time, so now I just they I'll, bullied you, bro. That's I'll pretend crazy. like I don't like this costume. <laughs> it's great. I don't care, chat. Jab in burnout. Uh -oh. The step back is crazy. Not a lot you could do in that spot. It's tough. You're going straight into the second round here, though. Uriel trying to establish a fireball game, following behind it off himself with the drive brush, but the perfect parry from nephew is gonna turn things around. Look at that, just casually walking behind it. The perfect parries. Mm. Bro, after three perfect parry fireballs, they just say, you know what? You're right. I'm just gonna stop throwing them. Oh, dude, just barely sneaks on the way in, able to get through. All right, goes for the command run into the overhead. Nice block though from Nephew. I'm side of the corner, but does take a little bit of damage from that DP attack. Yep, and level three, very, very smart, especially because you've already put yourself in a burnout here. So you're gonna get rid of most of the burnout timer on its own already. It is just barely gonna live though. Damn, it goes for the level three of their own. This is going to be another one of those situations where it's going to be very, very close. Since it's a CA, though, I do think it's going to be enough. Not quite. Oh, drive rush right yep, on the yep, end. Yep, 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 yep. Yep, forcing the block. Knew you were going to land, so just let the DP rip. As soon as you jumped, it's happening. There's nothing you, nothing you can really do. Oh no, with the block DP. I love going for the drive impact there, especially because your opponent has already used a lot of their drive gauge here. Got him down to two meters. There 
There we go. Nephew taking game number one. A grueling game one. But Very back old. to the drawing board here? Okay, no. Just going to yeah, go back for a little bit of breathing time. Not expecting a character swap. Obviously, when you're uh, Uriel, not only a strong player who just is focused in on Ken, but when you're playing a top three character, you might as well just kind of settle in. This character can fight anything in the game. No reason to even consider a swap. Oh, there after the crouch medium pressure's on nice with a perfect parry able to find a little bit of damage for it oh okay flying right over the fireball there with the tatsu i like how he went back just say it's time to go back to the streets i <laughs> want the moon boots back on tatsu comes out Good recognition that that jab wasn't going to connect. He's not standing medium kick. Oh, nice with a little shimmy there, throwing out the elbow. Patience. Wow, neither of them making the move, but finally, Nephew lets the crouching medium kick rip. And that should be the round. Yep, let's level one go. Yeah, Jerry, definitely one of the best level ones in the game, whether it's corner carry or just overall damage, as well as the frame data on it's very, very good. Level one, such a high reward. I just checks with the crouching light punch media option there, full confirm off of it too. I love using the Tatsu as an answer there. Okay, dash forward. Nice and throw tech. Want to get out of this without spending any meter if you can. Finds the throw. Still not enough. Overhead is blocked. Gotta be careful though. Critical Arc is locked and loaded now for Nephew. He's been scoring these, <laughs> these crouching medium kicks pretty consistently. Oh, but Uriel with the step back in the crouch medium kick of their own. Build a good counter poke there around a piece, both with three bars. Oh, I think next confirm, we definitely let the level three rip. Squeeze out as much damage as possible. Nope, we're just going to go straight into it. Yeah, this is definitely the right call. Leave yourself in a good position here. Have plenty of drive gauge for the offense here. If Uriel does something to be able to break out and get back control of things, you do have that uh, the drive reversal. Bends the OD though. Perfect parry. Uriel just trying to find the right opportunity to get out, but is not going to find it. DP straight through for the perfect. Yeah, the fireball from that distance easily answered. Nephew looking super clean ever since, getting, ever since getting sent to the losers. Two to zero. A threatening to be able to end it potentially on a 3-0. And with drive impact reactions like that, that might end up being our reality here. Nephew looking so strong. Rush forward, the extension is enough with the level one nephew. Powerfully is Bro. able to secure the round two games. All it takes is one more. And here we go. Has just been smothering here again. The shimmy so on point. Uriel has really been trying to go for these throw techs and is paying for it. Too greedy to try and press, but it's going to score a throw of his own. Nice with the punish counter. Confirming into the light kick. Waiting. Trying to bait out some kind of a reaction there from Nephew, whether it be a parry or a reversal. Yeah, that jump over was well worth it for the trade as well. That jab, pretty inconsequential in the grand scheme of things. Drive rush, a little too short. Still okay. Okay. 
still has two charges here. Next hit could potentially go into level three, depending on how much meter she can build up here. And that might be enough. Not enough to kill, but still a really good situation for Nephew. Yeah, this is looking like a check situation. I mean, Uriel still has that critical art. But there it is, closing it out with another EXDP reversal. Definitely the right call to bust that one out, not hold any of that pressure. We're looking for, obviously, coming up. I love the Me. eyebrows still go over the towel. The eyebrow over the towel is crazy. Okay, so using the parry, obviously super important. This got to be willing to be patient against JP. Overextensions usually are the death of you, and that's a great first fireball to throw here. Paladin, showing how to space yourself. Yeah, if you're going to throw fireballs, they have to be at a closer range in this matchup. You're basically using them to stuff JP summoning uh, anything, right? Summoning the portals just like that, or utilizing Pierce, sending out the ghosts. Uh oh, but we put ourselves into burnout now. Same so, Panakian is opting for a lot more fakes in this matchup here. Maybe just respecting the way the Paladin is going for the parries here, but either way, here comes the super! The combo's gonna drop! Or maybe just a reset attempt, either way. Paladin, good call out. Yeah, it looked like he was trying to reset straight into the drive impact so that he could score, score the stun. But Paladin was mashing out that super the entire time. Still going to end up losing the round here, though. There's that donkey kick that you mentioned before the match started, Proxy. Trying to use that to get in. This time, going to go full in for the throw. And Jay Wong coming through with the raid. Thank you so much, Justin. Good seeing you this weekend. Hope your stream went well. Yeah, definitely a pleasure to get to hang out at DreamHack, man. Appreciate you. Thank you for the raid. Hope the stream was good. Still find that pressure for Paladin Drive. Impact Banana Ken ignores the fireballs, able to break through. All right, and that is game number one here in Banana Ken's favor. Oh, okay, answering with a throw there. You saw Banana Cam was actually trying to walk outside of the throw range, but got caught. Ooh, I like that he threw that fireball knowing he was going to have time to be able to parry the portal. Wow, oh. it takes the longest run I've ever seen, dude. Bro, Rio with the insane. cardio. Yeah, but unfortunately, is to put himself into the corner now. There's the perfect parry. Ooh, okay. Faking Plan? out the cross-up. Look at this offense. Oh, but is going to get blown up here. Still has another opportunity. Is alive. Banana Ken is a burnout, yeah. but does get clipped with a counter hit. What are we were trying to go for? Walked forward. That almost felt like a shimmy with the teleport back. That was so crazy. There he goes. Looking good. Get the breakthrough. Okay. A couple good blocks in a row. Unfortunately, doesn't let you very much here. OD portal has to go for the... Uh, Little step forward as we go for the dash block and the empty jump throw. Damn, dude. And had plenty of time to go for the parry afterwards. Paladin, again, unfor a little unfortunate there, but Banana Ken is doing an amazing job of at, uh, adapting to the way that Paladin's fireball game has been going because round one, Paladin was dominating with the way he was throwing fireballs. And ever since then, Banana Ken has just kind of trivialized the way he's been able to do it. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Paladin, though, needs to figure out a way to trivialize Banana Ken's pressure because he is one game away from being sent out of the bracket. Tried to go for a sweep there. Unfortunately, it's going to whiff. Still kept that pressure up even with the threat of the portal behind him. Yeah. 
That's so far. That's so far. Oh, looking better on the fireball game here, though. Absolutely. Let's see, you have Banana Ken backed up to the corner, tries to go for the drive impact, but it was a little too obvious. Beautiful side swap for Banana Ken as well into the super. It's set point. Dude, he's the level one, just ridiculous. And that spot as PXG Res with a $50 contribution to the match arena, $352.35. The match arena is popping off and it's all thanks to you guys thank you so much for the crazy support for the players tonight man was that fake meaty Okay. Gets the wall splat. That's going to be a round. Paladin bringing out all the stops. He digs deep into that bag of tricks, Proxy. Okay. Activation. Finding throw. And the board was already set, but here in Burnout, they're going to make things a little more complicated for Banana Ken. Great check and tries to stop himself short there to get the whiff punish, but isn't quite able to connect. Oh, now in burnout though, and this is Paladin's last opportunity. Still has three bars available. So the difference here is looking really dangerous. And Ken wants to close it out here, and he's absolutely going to be able to. Dealing with that level two is so difficult. Especially when you're in burnout as Ryu. I mean, like, we saw him cross over. Looked super locked in at the beginning of the set in winners. But wasn't quite able to close it. Got it down to a, a near-death situation, but dude was able to come back. If crossover can keep that momentum, we could potentially see this run back all the way through. But Nephew, Nephew was super dominant in loser side here of Top 8 so far. The 3-0. Yeah, and already starting off really strong in this match against Crossover 2, but now Crossover has Nephew up against the ropes. Nephew swinging back, though. Gets the DP out. Mm, try to go for the weave. I like that non-committal. Crouching medium. Ooh, what a sway there. Just going back from the jump in. Double fireball is definitely good. Again, that weave, but actually ends up getting a nice little frame trap because of it. The spacing was beautiful. Jumps away and gives up all that real estate because of the fireball here, but not too worried about it. But maybe you should be. There's oh. the throw and there's the kill. Nephew with a great follow-up. What a diabolical trade. <laughs> Just nasty work. <laughs> Uh-oh, jumps to the other side. It's a little bit of a whiff punish, but Nephew answering back immediately with the reversal. Doesn't want to allow Crossover to build up any momentum here in this match. Wow, the up forward. Able to get that back though, though. Resecure the corner. Okay, and just like that sets us up. Anything will get the kill. Bro, and it's Mark. Hey, hey, nephew trying to find that one opening here. Beautiful throw tech. Staying alive, <laughs> but gets caught with the roundhouse. Yeah, that little step over there with the soul bot. Definitely huge. Around a piece. Gets the trade big in his favor because the amount of like the screen position he's able to win off of it. And gets the OD up kicks. Yeah, no swaying when Jury has that crouching medium kick, right? The range on that is so strong. 
Okay, definitely the right decision here. Gonna put Nephew so close to burnout. Crossover, back to full drive gauge. Opportunity arises here, Nephew with the CA. Anything potentially could do it, but we're not even gonna get the opportunity to cash it out. Crossover sends him to the heavens. That's one to zero. Nice little whiff punish there with the sway. Preventing the jump out too, what a conversion. Crossover absolutely ready. Dude, like what? <laughs> Perfect parry, back throw, opportunity to turn this round around, gets the throw again, dashes forward. Okay, but ODDP break out of the corner here, gets the sweep, and nephew. They have to just continue to poke. He's gonna get caught by that low though. Nephew spending everything here to score the kill. Able to hold on to that one bar though. Very good. Yeah, being able to hold on that meter, like you said, huge, but the three bars for crossover. Can't ignore it. Fakes the fireball and gets checked immediately. The OD overhead comes through after the sweep. Fireball, gonna check the legs. Crouching medium gets the punish though. You can see crossover really just wants to avoid dealing with that fireball in any shape or form. But it's easier said than done. Nephew gonna spend the level three here. Should be just barely alive after it, maybe? My oh. points, dude. Judy wins. It's okay. That's going to set it to a one-to-one. -one. Good on Nephew. Bro, the only right answer is to just not play. <laughs> it's true. Okay. Good amount of pressure there with the standing medium. Was able to get the two charges. Chuck the fireball. Keeps that pressure up. with The perfect parry. Doesn't get very much for it, but still. You know, message sent. And message received with the soap on as well. Alright, great throw attack. Setting out the fireball again. Ooh, what a shimmy there. Dropping the elbow onto the knee. Missing out on the combo though, put you in a weird spot. Burnout is gonna make this a little easier here. Is gonna be able to set up for the OD fireball potentially for the pressure. Level one is gonna break out. There's a gap there. But waking up with EX fireball, okay. Yeah, there's a lot of uses for OD fireball. It gets on wake up, might as well be one of them. Gets the throw again. Gets the dash. Is able to get the punish counter on the throw this time. Nice tech. I'm willing to hold that pressure for too long, but Nephew keeps it going with the throw loop again, but level two to break out of the corner. All right, immediately dashing up. Immediately buttons. Scores the throw. Not enough to kill. It goes right to the drive impact. Nice parry there, though, from Nephew. Staying alive. Super important oh! swing, it gave Nephew on the try. Rush runs out of meter. Even if he had the reaction there, he couldn't have, just didn't have the bar. I think he might have been trying to go for level three in that situation, because it looked like he got standing heavy kick. I think he was trying to buffer in level three out of the drive rush. Okay. Star is able to throw the punish counter actually. Nephew went for the reversal parry in that spot. Doesn't get the check afterwards. Is getting a huge punish here. Yep, 
Dab, and there we go. Just a meaty hitting its mark. Crossover getting caught pressing buttons on. Wake up. People with punish. Baiting out. No! That is tragic, Proxy. Baited out the reversal, but got no punish on it. Jesus, try to go for the level two as well. It's just gonna get parried. It's gonna be a little bit extra damage here. And Nephew is gonna chuck the fireball and walk him down even further. Okay. Able to get the reset actually there with the up kicks afterwards. Finds that touch again, but it's a little too far to be able to get any kind of conversion. We're just gonna backdash sway our way out of there. into the heavy fireballs. Okay, that's the jury special. Able to go for the drive rush into the DP. Gets the throw. Nice tech. Oh my god, a better OD fireball. My right, drive rush in, but it's gonna get checked this time. Man, that... That jumping high kick is so active. The most active. It feels like a, it feels like a real traditional dive kick. <laughs> it's so crazy. Again, dude! Let it rip. Speaking of letting it rip, here comes the level three. Crossover looking to close things out here. Going to be in a very advantageous situation. Very good tech to turn reset. Ooh. Yourself gets the counter punch. CA certainly going to be enough game five here in the loser's bracket. Absolutely, there it is. Pick the face up. Kick him to the curb. Judy wins. My God. <laughs> Oh no, really unfortunate there. It's the same situation we saw before. That crouching heavy kick slide, unfortunately not working out as the ant here in that spot. It's a more particular angle. They're trying to jump in. Speaking of angles there, wasn't quite able to hit that one. Did get punished. Luckily not as big as it could have been. There you go, kicking jury right to the corner, scores the throw. Time to turn up the heat, turn up the pressure. Wow, punish counter on a great step back here. Crossover's gonna kill with the one bar. Definitely the right decision. Round two. That little jab, so scary. Ready to throw out when your back is up against the corner against Jury, and here comes a massive punish. Here we go, install up. Goes for the burnout option. DP to catch you in the air. Stun is incoming. Uh -oh. oh, maybe not. And just like that, the throw loops are upon us. Takes that step forward. Isn't quite there, though. Whoa! Things were so good for Nephew. Now we're on the edge once again, back up against the ropes, but he's gonna be able to close up the round here. Final game, final round. Oh my God. Gets aggressive in that spot. It's not enough, looks for the jab. Green stuff once again, doesn't get the DP. Still okay though, Crossover's just gonna jump backwards here. Trades with the OD Fireball back to neutral for both of them. All right, back throw. This is huge now for Nephew. Uh -oh. This is gonna get messy. Way to just chill. No, but can't do it twice in a row. It's too enticing, Nephew. Just lean so hard on the shimmy for two interactions straight. And the second time it's gonna be money. 
Incredible stuff there from Nephew. Too many comebacks tonight, Proxy. <laughs> it has People been who are getting paid with the amount of money in the match arena. So this is a very, very important match. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Here we go. Neither player wanting to make the first move. Strider does let a Gladius rip, but after a bit of hesitation. Wow. We have a plan, and it is standing medium punch. <laughs> oh, my God, from JP. Though again, we see it so often. Able to connect, tries to go for it a second time. OD Amnesia goes from just far enough away, and with both of them kind of trading on the frame data, 801 Strider gets the better of it. Nice, I like the forward medium punch. Forward medium punch is going to be so important in this matchup. It's just a really good burst option. Moves Marisa forward, allows her to score a knockdown if you can get that counter hit or that punish counter. Nice block on the overhead, gets the trade. Seen this so often. Banana Ken loves to go for the level two as soon as he's able to get to set up with the portal, gets a good amount of damage down. I mean, I do not blame him for going for the level two whenever possible, right? It is so difficult to block the incoming mix up from that. Try to kill on the next hit, anything will do it. CA, absolutely the two hit confirmed into the CA. Learn some history, bro. Jesus. She's so raw. Incredible. <laughs> My wife. Oh my god, what an answer here. Oh my god, he just got hit with like the highest reward starter repeatedly. Goes for the jab, it's not gonna work. Gladius a little too far, gets the perfect parry, but it doesn't matter, the portals open up. And Brian F coming through with a big raid, thank you so much. Dude, hope you had a good stream, hope you had a good tournament experience, man. Appreciate you as always, dude. Thank you very much. Welcome to everybody. I'm sure you guys are all aware where we're at here, playing it out for top four right now. Oh, trade gonna be a banana can's favor here though. Pushing Strider out, portal is up. And again, you see when that portal comes up, so many people get paralyzed because it's so dangerous to move forward, so uncertain. But we're waking up with the level two. We're TNT. not paralyzed. We're not paralyzed. Level two right away. OD Amnesia gets the poke. Nice, he's able to get the parry though. Oh, nice drive rush back, heavy punch. Oh my God, deep in there. Had time to parry. I'm not sure a lot of characters in the game, if Marisa goes for the target combo on block, a lot of characters can just mash level one there. I'm not sure if the frame data is not good enough on that or if he just didn't mash it in time, but a lot of characters can can bust through that gap. Yeah, I mean, that's a good question. Gonna have to go back and look at the tapes for that to see when it really activated. But there's a clean jump out of the corner here. And Ken setting up the portal. Oh, <laughs> Strider does not care. Four media punch, let me out of here. Yeah, we are activated right now. <laughs> Good amount of damage to set it up though, gets the portal. Goes all the way through with the target combo. DI connects. Ooh, I like that. This time though, the super is gonna hit its mark. Oh, yep. Ooh. Just above the Superman punch there, able to close out the round. Oh, he's in burnout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Oh, okay. That's right, the extra, the extra plus frames from that burnout. Jab almost found it there, holds the parry. A little too far, but still okay. Catch the standing heavy punch from the drive rush, able to connect that into the standing medium punch target combo. And you are, uh, you're dead. <laughs> yep, definitely worth spending the meter here. Be able to get yourself cashed out, secure the round. Always the right decision, I, I would say. And now you know history. Why did she say that? 
What does she mean by this proxy? She's <laughs> trying to teach you. <laughs> oh, stopping short there, trying to bait out the OD Amnesia. Oh, just, you know, casually walk up, get the throw. Jab was a little too short, still okay though. So that is for the pressure, sets up the portals. He just ignores them and DIs, but unfortunately it's looking like it's gonna be a mistake this time. The level three activation, tons of drive game comes back. Strider in a really bad spot on the meter of his own. Yeah, blocking anything here. He tries to go for the parry, is put into burnout. And now Big Dana Ken just has full reign to go wild, is what I would say. But Strider, burnt out or not, does not seem to care. Still keeping the offense up. Does get hit by the fuzzy. Yeah, Rising Light Kick very strong in that squad. Comes to the portal, runs up, gets the throw to beat the Commando. That's really the first time Banana Ken has attempted a Commando in a spot like that. And unfortunately gets tossed over the shoulders for it. Jesus, bro. Oh, no. Ada wants to ride. Okay. Hello, punk? I mean, I'm down. I'm excited to get to see what he brings to the table with it. This is a, you know, scratching the Honda itch of my own. We're going to see the punk Honda. Uh, somebody in the chat asked if we have a, t uh, if we have a time slot for uh, Grand Blue Saturday, 6 p.m. this week. Get on there. All right, so yeah, Punk coming through with the Honda here for the Guile matchup. Tries to praise the sun, but is going to get caught. Uh, I feel like he might have just picked this just to see how much fun he was going to have. Because uh, if you were picking it for the matchup, I don't think you would pick Honda. Uh, this matchup is uh, kind of a struggle. Uh, definitely in Guile's favor. Not like unwinnable, but it's tough. Saying he's just trying to meme here on Knuckle Doo. <laughs> it was a sub goal, somebody in chat says. Let's get oh it. Oh, Chio for the kill. Not the sub goal. That's real content. When you enter these tournaments, I respect that. That's like the Umi show. Spend your channel points to do a, uh, a dragon install. It's the next phase of FGC streaming content. All right, we'll do. Still able to take the first round here. Crouching fierce in the hands. He is making that connect. Yeah, more than I've ever seen it connect with a Honda before. Tries to go for the standing heavy punch, the big chop. Whoa, Bro. no, not quite. A little too bad on the frame data there. Still okay, though. Good amount of damage into the level three. All right, the crossfire somersault hitting its mark. Sends out the boom again, just trying to play the spacing game. Stating medium kicks, we chin music. Almost that time I was jumping there, was trying to look for the chop. That punish counter chop is definitely huge whenever you can land it. Looks for the standing medium into the reset with the Ocho. But Dew is able to jump out. Final round. Patience here from Dew. Perfect parry on the head, but immediately goes into the drive impact to steal some of that drive gauge away as well. Okay. Nice with the chop. Still trying to harass. Oh my god, Crouching Fears. Stop that one out. Okay, not gonna do very much damage there. It's smart to not spend very many resources afterwards here. Finds the Ocho again. He is playing Honda like a very grappler. Like Ocho is a good command throw, but he's using it a lot. Oh, I like following up the Sonic Blade there with a baby boom. I but didn't have the life to be able to try and contest. Nice from dude to be able to lock down the game after losing the first round. I was looking like it was maybe gonna be Punk's favor. Still breaking out this the surprise Honda pick. All right, perfect parry there. Punk again, just trying to walk down. Jumping is going to get beat clean. Hey, after the perfect 
Perry still trying to lean in as best he can. Crushing medium and standing heavy kick both so good for being able to go for these pokes. Right, neutral jump. I love the anti there with the standing heavy punch. And beautiful, the crouching heavy punch again, Proxy, straight into the level one. Especially on the punish counter. Super free to be able to get that confirmed. Very nice from Punk. Okay, drive brush afterwards there. Tap the parry, trying to do something. But Sam does connect. It's that conversion again. All right, sits on him. What a trade. Do immediately going into the Sonic Boom right afterwards, though. He's going to get caught low. And sits on him, and Punk is able to tie things up 1-1. One, one. Dude, Punish, Counter, Butt Stomp gets you so much reward. And he's got such a good read on when these fireballs are coming out. Punk look, low-key looking like one of the best Hondas I've seen in a minute, dude. Like, actually. He's just got the sense for it. Yeah, all right, flash kick's gonna hit its mark, sets up the Oki there. There we go. You and me both, buddy. We're out here fighting for our lives in these ranked streets. Yeah, EX Headbutt is a good way to just blow straight through some of these Sonic Booms if Dew is being a lot obvious with it. Of course, it is risky because if he recovers in time, you are <laughs> a block EX Headbutt is going to get punished in a big way. All right, this is Perry again. Dew actually trying to test the reactions here. Closing the distance is going to get caught right to the butt slam. Plus frames it to the throw. Oh my god, good spacing there too to be able to be right outside of the range for the DR. He's gonna be able to convert to level three, gonna set him up, circle of flames. And about to get Johnny executed. Cash. He's gone, brother. <laughs> That's so disrespectful. Like from a sumo perspective, he's like, I'm about to ring you out. No, 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 come back. Let's go. We're going back in the middle. <laughs> Just domination, bro. That's Hondo's flavor of sumo. Great for Otek. Immediately DI's the upside down kick. Uh, standing medium goes into the target combo afterwards. Good amount of damage on the knockdown. And just harasses with standing medium from great spacing to level one to shove him out. I know Punk. Punk's chat is having a field day right now, probably. <laughs> Right, scores the back throw. He is playing this matchup so well, slowly but surely approaching. Uh, he's just old enough now. It's time. It's time. Over <laughs> carry to the standing heavy punch. Very close off of that. Ends up zero. Oh, and they're crouching heavy from that distance was crazy but we're gonna go straight into the di for that extra little bit of damage to the drive gauge jumps over so he didn't quite have the charge for the head but still gets a knockdown though bro i, I feel like punk utilizes crouching heavy punch more than any honda i've seen <laughs> and he uses it so well all right but you gotta watch out close to burnout and close to chip here comes the trade for knuckle do Somebody asked if Punk has been playing Honda this tournament. No, this is the first time. First step. They just decided. Trying to go for the shimmy there with a the standing heavy punch. Jumping 
trade, you'll happily take that trade at the life totals we have now. Wow, that meaty headbutt. Alright, yeah, he's gonna go straight into the level three. This will be a critical art too. With some extra damage there on the deck. But you're not out of the woods yet if you're knuckle do. There's the anti the standing heavy punch catches him with the standing medium! And Punk is at set point! Dude, and he has level three available. He's in such a good spot, actually. Taps the parry, but it's a great throw. Oh, oh. To go for a throw there. Was expecting it from Dew, but the shimmy caught him. Yep, flash kick every time. Nice delay there to make sure you're going to be able to get the cross up. It will score the low. Resets into a throw this time. Now has do right where he wants them. Instead of taking the OD, charges up the sun. Bro, he wants to close it out. He's praising Ooh. the sun so he can get the full confirm with the extra hand. Level three, CA to the corner. You're in burnout. He's coming! <laughs> oh my god, dude. He jumps back! He goes level two! Oh, he DI! <laughs> it whips! It whips two to two! Bro. <laughs> what? Unreal. Unreal, letting the flash kick rip. That was divine intervention. That's the second time that dude has been on the verge of losing a set and he's been like, I'm just gonna flash kick and you're, uh, let's see what you're gonna do about it. All right, but nice jump out. All the way to game five, huh? <laughs> does build a ton of room for you. Oh, okay. I like it. Interesting answers there. Just trying to low crush with the bud slam. But some trade happily taken once again. Nice crouching heavy punch anti-air. Hitting again. Just preventing dude from jumping. Oh, he's going to let it rip. That's it. Oh, yeah. Chip. He has to slow down until Baby Boom's the level two. Could blast through from Honda at the right spacings. That was so smart from Dude to take the chip he could and then chill. You do not want to get level two in that spot. All right, set point now for Dude has brought it back from the brink. Able to block the overhead. Upside down kick comes. Standing heavy punch is such a good anti-air. The chop is my lifeblood. What an amazing normal. I like it. Bazooka knee. Get the plus frames. Dude, trying to be aggressive to close this out, but you got to be careful. All right, here come the booms. Jump actually doesn't get anti-air here. Finds a throw. Opportunity. You cannot let him get away. Bro, another throw back is up against the wall. Dude hasn't even gotten a chance to spend it in these booms. Finally, they come out. And there it is. Crouching medium kick. Dude is able to move on to grand finals. What a set, though. Bro. Punk playing Honda. Oh, yeah. He didn't and know that. He did. Immediately. Immediately after. That's and more crazy. hips, less shoulders coming through with the prime for 14 months. Thank you so much. Okay, good early stop to that. I feel like establishing uh, dominance over the Superman punch is a really important thing as Jury in this match, as early as you can. It's definitely not the be all end all, but it's such a strong option in so many of these spots. But still, Nephew continuing to dominate here. Good tech from Strider, but a good tech might not be enough in this spot. 
Just remember, this is a run back for Nephew. These two faced in a top eight qualifier and Strider did win 3-0. It was a pretty dominating 3-0, to be honest. So, Nephew answering back in a big way here with nearly a perfect in the first round. There it is. Crushing Heavy Punch with the anti-air. Wow! Being able, to find the medium, being able to find the mediums afterwards so strong as well. One... Oh, there it is. It goes, it goes, guillotine. Backs up, trying to bait out a button press or a reversal. But it is going to get caught. Try to try to go for the forward heavy kick, but got stuffed. And yeah, Nephew being able to secure this game is definitely a big deal. Some of that confidence on his counter, though, gets the knockdown. Getting checked for fireballs here. Last time we saw this matchup, a big uh, answer for Strider was going straight into the parry stance to deal with the fireballs, right? His nephew, like a lot of jury players, likes to throw out fireball and follow behind it with the drive rush. So far, not throwing out as many fireballs here in neutral to follow behind. Just kind of leaning more onto those good footsies buttons, but there's a command grab from Strider. Trying to get things started now, closing the gap with the forward heavy kick. There we go. Has to actually throw two fireballs to be able to brute force it, but still makes it work. Oh my god, what a great reaction there. Knowing you don't have any drive gauge of your own, you've got to go for something, and the level one happens to be the perfect answer. Oh, with punish on the Gladius. Able to get a charge up on deck. There's the perfect parry. Gonna put you all the way back up against the ropes. Beautiful shimmy. Nephew coming back with a vengeance proxy. Said, you 3-0'd me. I'm looking to 3-0 you. Strider, we have seen come back in pretty crazy situations, though. Tries to get aggressive there with the drive rush, but immediately gets checked. Even with the CA still available, I don't even know when you're really going to have an opportunity to spend it here with how risk adverse Nephew has been playing. Even getting walked to the corner here, still willing to commit. Judy. Crouching medium punch for the connection. Nephew, like you said, looking for that reverse 3-0. Or the responsive crew or something, whatever you want to call it. Good God. Maybe here we go, scores throw. It's like a true reverse 3-0. <laughs> Look at your drive gauge just getting chipped away with every block. Armors right through. Oh, you're dead. You're, you're actually, actually dead. super dead. Especially in the no. corner. No, not quite enough. DP actually is able to get back up, but still crouching light punch. Ooh, a turnaround. Yeah, if Strider would have ex that Superman punch there, definitely would have killed. Getting caught by these frame traps, and now your back is up against the wall. Okay. Ooh, step back was a little nice there. Didn't quite anything for it. Gets the command throw, but it's not enough to equalize, even with the mix up afterwards. Supposed to throw here, another drive rush. Doesn't go into the heavy punch this time. The threat of reversal was too great. Spends all the drive gauge, being able to close it out without spending a single lick of bar. F you now sending it set point. All right, scores the throw with the takedown. Setting heavy punch, going for a bit of a shimmy there. A little bit harder to shimmy with Marisa thanks to her slow walk speed. All right, though. Special with Gladius. Double three for both players. Gets the armor. And that is such a huge chunk of the life bar out of the way. And now you just die. Jesus, man. 
one gladius is all it takes to equalize that amount of life total two That's to it. one strider he says listen oh, oh I, he says i think i got time for another reverse 3-0 <laughs> Gladius is a, it's a pretty good move. You know, if I do say so myself. Beautiful, perfect parry, stopping Nephew short. Right, here we go, pressure is up. Checking with the standing light punch. Able to confirm that into the DP. Oh no, still ended up. What is happening? We are, we, it's getting squirrely here now. Normally when it gets kind of squirrely like that, I feel like you gotta favor the Marisa player just because when they're able to, when everybody is scrambling and throwing haymakers, the person throwing the hardest haymaker generally gets the better of it. But Dre did a great job on the scramble there and now set it up for set point. Yeah, once again, in a good position to send Strider out of the bracket here. Gonna go straight into the install. You're gonna be put into the corner, incoming mix up. Yeah, nullify it. We just hold that parry button. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> I'm in danger. Uh-oh. Oh my god, level three is built up. Dude. Hold on. Hold on. Pixel, pixel, Chat room? pixel, 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 pixel. Okay, yeah. If it was, if it was critical, you'd be dead. Oh! <laughs> See the dash of throw! One to one on round strider fight, make it game five! All right, yeah, it gets caught low. Going low is so good against Marisa, right? Her armor gets blown up by it. It doesn't even have to be a real low, it just has to hit low enough. It has to have low energy. <laughs> Got the throw. Command throw. Turn to the life off the table. Reset things a little bit. Crouching medium gets the normal throw. Pressure still on. Nice DP. Another guillotine. What a reversal. Oh my god, but the level one response is not enough to kill. Wow, you have a pixel of life left, and there it is. Crouching light kick. Nephew taking down Strider after being sent to losers by him. Dude, in a back and forth brawl, but between... in the money is not good enough. We need a, we, we, we both want a victory here. Oh, absolutely. $352 in that pot. Nephew, crouching, standing medium, crouching medium, goes for the jab, punk, obliges. What a great turnaround. Let the spiral arrow into the dash. Ooh, trying to go for the perfect parry there. Oh, trying to look for that double shimmy twice in a row. Standing medium kick is a great answer to that from Nephew. Okay, that little step back is good. Good spacing on the dive kicks from Punk. World class, man. There's the throw again, though, from that. Patience. The spacing is so immaculate here for Punk. There we go, drop rush on in. Heavy kick, from a good spacing, dive kick, not quite gonna find much. Yeah, but there's the counter hit from Nephew. Great corner carry on that respectful damage too. A punk blowing his way right out with a reversal of his own. More importantly, it's that side swap thanks to the reversal. Okay, knockdown. Punish counter on the throw. A good way to start your line of pressure here. Look for the jab, look for the drive, rush, and the dive kick almost gets there. Nephew blocks everything. Patience of a monk. 
Yeah, blocks everything, but has blocked himself into burnout here. And there it is. Drive impact. Punk gonna be able to close this out with level three. Yeah, I mean that is the most the most true way to show off. We talk about it all the time. You cannot block forever. Eventually you have to make some kind of move. Oh my god, the tap of the parry there. Put him in kind of a weird spot here, gets the throw. Oh, drive rush on in, just narrowly avoiding that button coming out from Punk. Does it again, just trying to get that snowball rolling. Backdash, remember last time you were here, Punk did go for the DP. Again, harassing a little bit of damage to the drive gauge here and there, but Punk not too worried about it. Kind of wait his turn, gets the jump over, kind of declining any of these drive rush clashes. I mean, tries to initiate on his own then, but getting a little too far. Damn, after the overhead reset, it's gonna be able to get the activation level three. So the nephew, almost able to make this even on the games, gets the throw. One more interaction, nice tech though. Yeah, smart to go for another throw there. Doesn't quite get the shimmy, unfortunately. That was the opportunity to get a point on the board, tie things up. Whoa, oh, that range on the throw. <laughs> it felt kind of far. <laughs> a little too far. <laughs> Damn, so even up the games here. Fast and furious between the two. Which is what I feel like you would expect just seeing not only these two players, but these two characters as well. It goes for the double dash and looks for the rising normal. It's not going to work, but still finds a knockdown afterwards, even with the DP for Funk. All right, we got two stocks on deck here for Nephew. Nice with the dive kick. Punish counter leads to a full combo. Yeah, the bottle back and forth was very smart. Going for the low crush there. And he those normals that get stuck out and uses the OD spin knuckle to completely ignore everything that he is going for. A pixel of life left. Yeah, Punk puts himself in the burnout in the process, but is not worried. Just spacing out with that standing medium kick. Solid footsies is going to close out that round. Perfect parry. We don't go for the side swap though. Mm, still finds rising normal in the drive in the dive kick though. A very good job to be able to control this space. Punk just goes for the jump over. Nephew's ready with the DP and that little step back. Even on rounds, dude, such an important round. Yeah, trying to get that two-one lead here. Get that momentum into your favor. The ball in your court and just harassing there, putting out the elbow. <laughs> Bro, help. <laughs> Sick of this medium punch. <laughs> There's nothing anyone can do to save you, my child. Level three. There it is. But I don't think it's going to be enough. That was a lot of scaling on a light starter. Hold up. Ay, you're dead. Oh, my candle my point. <laughs> Two to one again, dude. Nephew taking the lead. Punk switched to Honda, bro. It's time. No, 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 no. <laughs> the people's power up the Honda pick. <laughs> Good interruption 
there with the jab. Tried to go for the OD overhead. Not going to work out here. Punk gets the chase down. Gets the full conversion into the corner. Right, scores the throw. Just immediately wakes up with the EXDP. No fear at all here from Nephew. Has a game to give. Level one. Last hit usually does a chunk, but it's still not enough to get the kill. Oh my God, but sneaks one in there. And again, in burnout, I come in a really dangerous situation of things that got out of hand. Nephew makes it two round, two games and a round threatening the set. Punk has to do something, but there is that punish counter on the attempt to throw that rising normal. It's crazy. Yeah, the fuzzy into the dive kick. trade you want to see at this point in the game. Nephew doesn't want to be making any of these trades. Punk going for the DP, not spending any meter, wisely holding on to it. You have such a substantial life lead, and now we're going to the next round. The Punk showing off one of the most important things you can do in this game. The special cancel was way too far to be on block at that point. Recognized that the spacing was way off. Was able to get the crouching medium for the punish counter. That's super important to do with your character in just about any matchup. You can't let things like that go for free. Yes, we saw that situation comes up again, but it was a little too slow that time. Oh my god, the green stuff turns on, is able to get the connection, spends the super right away, two to two again. It feels like so many of these sets have been going in that direction. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five sets of top eight have gone to game five. Only three sets so far have not, or four sets, excuse me. So about half of top eight has been game five. There it is with the shimmy. Oh, things not looking good for Nephew in this starting round here. Trying to go for the crouching medium. Does end up finding the chase down with the DP. But Punk, so often when Punk gets hit with a DP, he answers with one of his own. And his timing for those kinds of things is insanely good. All right, stop short. Try to bait out that reversal from Punk. Just checking what he's gonna do again. With the fuzzy into the dive kick, hitting its mark. But speaking of dive kick, Punk letting one of his own rip. Oh my God, runs underneath and just keeps walking. That was an amazing call. Oh, what a trade. Careful, Chip is a factor, but he's gonna hit it. Set point now for both players. Final game, final round. That reversal very early into this one. Push away by a little bit of real estate. Nice tech. That was a very brave walk up on the throw from Punk. Both of them are sitting on level three as well. Proxy, there's the wake up DP. Huge risk. They are fishing, fishing with the footsies. There it is, gets it confirmed into the level three. Nephew is gonna have Punk right where he wants him in the corner. Walks up for the throw. CA is available, DP is available, wakes up with a jab. Oh and there God. it is, EXDP. Nephew eliminates Punk in third place. Dude, Nephew with a great turnaround there. Like we said before, back uh, on the uh, on the brink, on the edge. But here we go, grand finals to begin. Do gonna be rocking the guile, definitely the right call, I think. Look at these perfect parries and perfect boom. Clean 
jump in. Ending it with the DP there, score that knockdown. Okay, a little, I mean, net negative on life when it comes to how you were trading out, but ends up getting the overhead afterwards. To calculate a risk of making do spend that time parrying that fireball to have time to walk up to get aggressive ended up being the difference breaker for a nephew there. Yeah, very much for sure. We're gonna see how Knuckle is gonna be able to slow things down though. All right, starts to mix it up. This time goes for the drive rush bazooka knee, but gets a little too close into that boxing range. Nephew taking advantage. Oh, just a little too far away to be able to get that jump in. So the counter hit, is able to get the confirm there and is able to stop the dive kick afterwards, but Nephew not deterred, ends up finding the dive kick on the secondary inter interaction. Yeah, you just gotta walk him down. Perfect parry's trying to find the right opportunity. Oh my God, that was a hell of a flash kick there from Dew. And he's gonna save the meter. He's gonna try and fight it all for the final round here. That's so risky. If you don't kill him, there's no final round. And now you're in burnout too. You can't afford to block anything in EX flash kick. I'm so get... surprised to see no meter exchange there. I get why you don't spend it, right? I the threat the of round. spending it and then losing the round. Step back though, still finds the hit. Isn't that level two to great effect here? And that's a nice delay to be able to find the throw as well. All right, here we go, straight into level one. Absolutely, Nephew gonna take game one of this grand finals with a perfect seven silver letters. Okay, crouching medium. You get a little bit of damage there. Ends up getting the trade with the crouching fierce and finds the throw after the drive rush. Oh my god, that leads straight into the loops, straight into the end of the round. Do takes a quick one on that. Drive rush in. This time stops short, but actually Trail's still dropping a little too far to be able to get the uh, get the anti-air. Yeah, was hella cheap. Was able to get a counter hit there. Didn't even go for the full confirm. Instead just walks up for the reset level two activation. <laughs> my god, dude. The Crouching Fierce hits high enough in the air where he always can get the flash kick from that spot. Great conversion on the damage. And yeah, spacing is immaculate there with the flash kick. Tries to go for the overhead. Perfect parry. What a response from Nephew. Again, just putting Dew into the corner. Facing out that standing heavy kick. He just keeps throwing it out. <laughs> Wow, that level one, good amount of damage. Try and equalize this as best you can. Getting a ton of drive gauge back because of this and is able to find the flash kick because of the jump forward. Utilizing the flash kick there to actually fly through Jury's fireball. That was very impressive from Dew. Nephew, it, oh, did yeah, didn't have enough life there for the drive impact to survive it. The install incoming mix up in the corner yeah we see most people try to go oh that was tragic yeah definitely we see most people tonight go for the parry uh whenever the incoming mix up comes from jury's install which is a smart option but the threat of the throw is still there Okay, 
Put another round on the board. Dude, it is so back and forth. I mean, dead even. Dead even for sure. In terms of the meter that they have available as well. Up in there. Nice. The standing heavy punch hits its mark. Absolutely goes into level one. And that distance closed just a little bit out of time. Uses the Sabat. Perfect parry. Stick out that standing medium kick. Tries to throw out the boom this time, but Jury's drive rush is just a little too fast. EX, you have to interact with it. Oh, no, we don't, baby. The corner. <laughs> and I'm out of here. Got plenty of room. Nice good punish. Oh my god, but the DP anyways. It's time. Thanks for the drive gauge. <laughs> oh, but it doesn't matter. Uh -huh. Dew is able to find the hit going up 2-1 here in this grand final. Setting himself up for success. Potentially the final game of the tournament here. Trying to be that impenetrable wall. There's the back throw. Just harassing with booms in the corner, keeping the pressure up. But Nephew able to find room to throw his own fireball. Gives him a narrow opportunity to escape. Yeah, narrow is right. Does find the clean touch afterwards anyways. Almost builds up that level two, depending on the interactions here. But now at this point, you might want to just try and save the bar if you can, unless you can convert into level one for the kill now. But instead, throw after throw. Hey, stop short there. Was definitely expecting the EX flash kick. We've seen it multiple times from Do. <laughs> this one you have to interact with. Yeah. It will just keep going. <laughs> not, the, not the drive rush right as it was about to hit. I feel like that was definitely intentional. Trying to eat his input. <laughs> <laughs> so you ain't jumping. Do threatening the tournament now. Has that level three. Overhead does connect. He's going to cash out, okay. I'm going to try and stake your claim on this round. Get yourself back into this one. Do a big opportunity. We've seen him flash kick in this spot so many times. Yeah, that is right. Oh, and there it is. Do is able to close it out. 3-1 against Nephew. Yeah, that, that, that drive rush to eat the inputs was absolutely beautiful. <laughs>